All right. Uh, well, I this was unexpected, but I am I'm back. I am uh, I am here doing another game, and we're gonna be doing a lot more games actually. So uh, I guess this has a surprise bonus. Uh, I have been allowed to do a special. I guess I'm gonna call it a speedruns from the crypt bonus episode or preview. Uh, if you do not know, Speedruns from the Crypt is a bi-weekly horror hotfix that I run. I make Dices. Uh, we do it every other Wednesday normally. The next one of that will be on December 8th, and I'll be uh, having another runner come on for that. However, uh, both as a treat from GDQ and just the ability to kind of showcase a bunch of horror games, I'm kind of going to show you a bunch of a variety of different horror games. We have a nice selection of pretty uh, powerful games, I think, fun ones, and they should be fun. We have three. And I'll be running all of them just to kind of go that way. Because while I, you know, I am a showrunner, uh, very often, um, I don't know, people, I guess people, there's always that thing of like, oh, do they, do they speed run? Because I always wonder, oh, what, what do they do? Uh, so you get to see some of the games I do, uh, which is a lot of different horror games. Anyway, I'll talk more about that as we go. We're doing Saw the Game because I figured movie tie-in, movie tie-in, it makes sense, right? All right. Anyway, time will begin once I select Amanda right here. So three, two, one, let's go. So Saw the Game, I like this game. It's made by Konami, and it is a movie tie-in for the Saw franchise. My favorite part about this game is that you can mash every single button, and it counts as doing the right button. Like, it wants you to push, like, A while looking on the reverse bear trap, and it wants you to push, like, Y. If you just mash all the buttons, you got it. Also, all the codes are predetermined, so if you just know what buttons or what the codes are, you can put them in. You don't have to do any of the actual puzzles. You can just sort of avoid it. Now, why he'll ask me, how is this game? Is it good? Is it bad? As a speedrun, this game is actually really good and amazing. As a casual game, uh, this game is hilarious. Uh, part of the reason why is because every puzzle is going to be walking on glass and uh, dealing with shotguns. Uh, Detective Tap here is going to be jamming his arm in so many dirty toilets, you think he was James Sunderland. And stuff like that. Um, never before sawn, exactly. That is, the, uh, that is the appropriate title for this episode, I suppose. Never before sawn. Also, you can see the glass. Also, Tap will refuse to wear shoes, even though that would be the smarter idea. This is a game, yes. Uh, this was a licensed game made around 2009, I believe. I looked it up. That was 2008, 2009. And it came out um, around the hype of the movies. Also, it's funny because a lot of people like the Saw franchise. I like the Saw franchise, too. But I say it's funny because people take Jigsaw way too seriously when a lot of the plot's really stupid. Just enjoy the ride. That's all I can really say. What can I say? I enjoy Saw. I do enjoy Saw. As well, let me show you every single combat section in the game for the most part. Uh, this is actually a boxing game. You think it's a horror game? No, it's actually a boxing game. So we're just going to punch him in the throat three times. And oh, hey, he's dead. You think after killing all these dudes as well that he would just steal the shoes, but apparently he either has an aversion to other people's feet or he just loves walking on broken glass. One of the two. Also, here's the shotgun trap. If you push the wrong button, you instantly die. Uh, that's it. This game is all shotgun traps. Here's a minor skip. If you do not go all the way in the room, you skip a cutscene and you can grab the nail, which then lets me pick the door. Uh, these locks are actually really fun and they're some of my favorite in the whole game. Oh God, uh, oh no. Uh, there we go. It, they're actually really fun. Uh, you have to kind of just match the colors, and I like them. Uh, this game does have a decent amount of RNG. The RNG in this game is going to be the puzzles and the seeds you get. Uh, we have having quite a lot later where a lot of the run will be, oh, how fast can you solve the puzzle, which is quite nice. Another shotgun door, by the way. Maybe he has larger feet. I'd rather wear, like, baby shoes than walk on glass. I feel like that makes sense, right? And if I can try to jam my feet into something, I'd rather... You know, I'd rather, like, a plastic bottle over walking on glass. There's many better options than subjecting your feet to broken glass. Like, look at all, like, the paper on the ground. Make paper shoes. Do anything. But no, Tap loves walking on broken glass. And here's a minor skit. If you cancel that, you open the body early. It just kind of opens while he's jamming his hand in there. It's supposed to be the, uh, the animation of you cutting open the body and using the scalpel. But you can just skip that by um, quitting that animation and just re-entering it, which is kind of fun.
But yeah, Saw of the Game is definitely a neat one. Um, I found out about this game partly through speedrunning, and I've always kind of known about it. And then me being just a fan of the General Saw series, I wanted to try it out. And all I can really say is that this is a passable horror game. Was it kind of Battle Royale is this? It's Saw. Uh, in terms of what I'm playing on, I'm actually playing on a controller. Uh, the reason why is because playing on keyboard and mouse is much too difficult to balance on the balance beams. Plus, movement's pretty nice on controller with games like this. Um, but if you try playing on a mouse and keyboard, um, it's just really difficult to do any of the balance beam stuff. You very likely die. I've accidentally moved my mouse once and it killed me immediately. Like, I think I just had it hanging slightly off my mouse pad and I just died. I was like, oh, okay. Am I using cheats? No. I don't know what cheats this game even has, if any. Thank you for the compliments. This is definitely a classic game. Anyway, here's a fun puzzle. You just have to... I guess the answer is gun. Again, since we know all the answers, a lot of the puzzles can be do, uh, do the puzzle and get out. So the answer is gun. I love the idea of somebody speed running Jigsaw's uh, traps. Oh, you have to test your life. Oh, wait, what are you doing? No, no, stop. Wait, that's too fast. No, don't do that. Imagine speed running a saw trap. Or Jigsaw. But yes. I do hope you're all having a wonderful night so far. As well, now that we're kind of more settled in the saw of the game and we're kind of heading back to that locked door, allow me to tell you all a little bit about myself if you are uh, maybe newer to the general concept of, I guess, either GDQ or the Speedrun Sim Encrypt uh, showcase. Uh, I am McDysis. Uh, I run over 100 unique horror games. I've kind of lost count after 100 because I don't know what I'm counting for anymore. Uh, but that is the general idea. And I just love the genre. I think it's a fun genre of games. It has a lot of neat stuff. And realistically, it's just kind of a way to show that realistically, you can speedrun any game you want. A lot of people always wonder, what game should I do? What game, you know, is good for speedrunning? Your favorite game. Pick a game you like. That's it. It doesn't matter what the game is. As long as you enjoy it, you can have a fun time with it. And I firmly believe that mantra. Although I don't recommend speedrunning like an actual death trap. That that might get you killed. So don't don't do that one. But Saw the Game is a fun game. And then like yeah, earlier we did Night Trap. Um, I was actually really happy to be on Awfully Silly as well. Uh, I love Awful Block. I love Awful Games. So I was pretty delighted when I was asked for it. So it's fun stuff. But I hope that kind of gives a good glimpse into what the, at least that showcase of games is all about. Anyway, on to the next puzzle. The answer is 579. I'm uh, just going to be a door code. Oddly enough, the door code usually starts on zero, but as the game progresses, they're like, wait a minute, uh, wh what if you randomize the door code? Oh yeah, do it. Yeah, that's a smart idea. I've done that before. I've done a lot of games. And I'm actually learning new games as we speak, too. Uh, the next game I want to learn is an indie game that came out recently called Elisa which is an Alice in Wonderland Resident Evil style game, and it looks quite neat. That's also kind of the other thing. I always like to learn new games as well. It's not just about what I have, but I like adding on to that list. Also, look, Taps Floating. All right, on to one of the major games. So every chapter is based on a person. This chapter is Amanda, um, and every chapter will kind of have the final death game. And this one's gonna be really, really deep for a Saw game. It's left and right. Blue goes to the right, red goes to the left. Uh, this is RNG on how it spawns, but the general idea is you want to pay attention to how the, um, I guess the bends will fall. So the pattern I have is right, right, left, left. So uh, now I don't have to worry. Thank you, I'm glad you enjoy them. Learning is half the fun. Do we save everyone? We do, uh, we can. We can. We can. Do experience those transfer across different games? Yes. And no. Um, there's little skills that, you know, obviously can factor into it. Like, I think just being able to finish runs is super important. There are so many people who won't finish a run. Unless you're, like, gunning for world record and you're within, like, seconds of that, finish your runs. It is super important to finish your run. Like, the idea of a no reset is super important. I see so many people struggle with the details of not wanting to do no reset because it's like, oh, I can get a better time. No, you can't. Not yet. Practice. 
A lot of people do not understand that idea. It's okay to finish bad runs. You're gonna get to parts of the game you're not normally gonna get to. But I feel like a lot of people also say that as well. So it's a good thing to say. Also, I don't think we have an exact um, games list for this one, but the games list for that command will be Saw the Game, uh, Dead Rising 2 off the record, and Silent Hill 2. Also, uh, the player model is being given an antidote. Uh, she has a poison in her body, and we're getting rid of that one. Uh, that is act, uh, the, that's why we had to kind of give her the red, and we get the blue. It's a whole weird puzzle where we're taking some of the poison, but sharing an antidote. It's very strange in the way the game kind of forms things. Alrighty. So now I get to wait for this tape, and we're gonna be looking for a health hypo. Uh, you don't absolutely need it, but it's nice to have the safety of that. Uh, items also spawn randomly, so they can... They're, Items are pseudo-random, and a lot of this game is pseudo-randomness. Pseudo-randomness is a weird thing, and what I mean by pseudo-randomness is... So the item can spawn in one of the three searchable areas in this room. And hey, thank you for the kind words, chat. And with the searchable areas, they'll always spawn a health hypo, but in one of the three. So keep that in mind. So like, this should be empty. That should also be empty. I think there's a rare chance you can also get other items, but the pool tends to be in the items around the area. And that's a good thing to understand for later because we're gonna be able to do a nice skip near the end of the game with that. Also, the AIs don't matter, they lead us immediately, so you can just punch them if you want. And then they insult you. If you know anything about the Saw series, this is very important. Anyway, I'm sure Amanda won't abandon us in five seconds. Oh no, Amanda's gone. Oh no, who would have ever thought? All right, so we haven't jammed our arm in anything dumb in a hot minute. So he's gonna jam his arm in a vat of acid in order to get a key. Detective Tap really likes doing that. That's a very good speed run. It's kind of an ebb and flow. Um, so very often, new games I do, I have a good time doing. Uh, lately, one of the games I've really been enjoying, I have done recently on the GDU Hotfix, it was Siren Blood Curse, and it's been a lot of fun. As well, I guess Dead Rising is up there. I'll actually be running Dead Rising 1, the original Dead Rising, at Awesome Games Done Quick 2022. We're getting to 2022, that's wild. But I'll be running uh, that game there. It's actually uh, one of the games I've really wanted to do. Um, it's probably one of my favorite runs I've ever had. So I guess Dead Rising. And I'm, I guess I'm happy that the GDQ games list seems to like games I submit. Although it does help that I have a very, very broad submission palette. I guess having 100 games to choose from works quite nicely whenever the time comes around. Dead Rising is not really a horror. I suppose zombies eating people is just a casual walk in the park in that case. All right, so now we have this new thing on our neck. The thing on our neck is going to be a shotgun trap. If we get too close with um, to people with other shotgun colors, uh, we'll die. So you wanna stay as far away as possible. There's also a lot of these uh, tripwire traps. If you walk into it, you die immediately. It is a one-shot kill. There's a lot of things in the game that will be boiled down to, and it's a one-shot kill. Which is quite fun. All right, there we go. We're not gonna die. It's beeping fast too, so I have to keep running. All right, there we go. Eventually they'll die if they stay far away, but you'll die if they're close. That's kind of the way the system works. Anyway, we got what we needed, so we are now able to continue moving. Luckily, just a nice little uh, jog back. I love the way Tap jogs, by the way. He has such a nice jog. Is this live? I haven't had that question in a hot minute. The run is live, but chat is pre-recorded. Also, this kind of opens up a neat thing I like to talk about in my own personal stream. Horror is an incredibly broad genre. The main idea is they could be a lot of different things. A game like Luigi's Mansion can be horror. The main idea of horror is it has an intent and it's consistent. 
So yes, Dead Rising is horror. That game you don't think is horror? It's probably horror. There's a lot of gatekeeping in horror, and I don't know why. So I try to be uh, opposed to that. So keep that in mind. And also, um, we're not going to die immediately being next to someone. It's a timer. So the more it beeps, um, the more you're going to be closer to dying. But also, the inverse happens. So if they're close to beeping, uh, they'll also die. All right, so we're going to be hitting one of the hardest games, uh, one of the hardest skips in the game. Also, Luigi's Mansion is horror designed for children. It's uh, designed to be a survival horror game meant for children. Wait, uh, you know, anyone can enjoy it of all ages, but it's definitely a child-friendly game, which is not bad. I'll be playing Dead Rising at GDQ 2022. Dead Rising 1, the original. Mario Party is not horror. No, it's not intended to be. It's intended to be a fun party game. All right, so the skip coming up is going to be called the Steam Skip. Uh, what's going to happen is we're going to skip some steam. You can see that there's deadly steam here, and steam burns are a very real thing that can happen. Uh, they hurt. So we're going to avoid that. Or more powerfully, we're just going to skip it entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run right next to the steam and I'm going to hope that I walk it right at the line and we're going to walk right through it. That is a very fine line to walk and I know it does not look like much, but if I went any more to the right or the left, I would have messed up the trick. It is a very precise line because if you go to the right, you will die immediately. If you go to the left, you will bonk on the wall and then die immediately. You have to get through that line without being in the steam for too long because the steam has an automatic kill. It does a bit of damage to me to kind of tell you, hey, you're, you're in danger but you will die immediately if you are not in the right spot. So it is kind of food for thought on that one. Wait, that's pretty early on that one. I hope I don't die. Are oh, we good? All right, time for the uh, first actual boss fight of the game. Uh, this is Cubehead. It's kind of like another Konami famous horror character. Anyway, here's the fight, we stab him. And then we punch him. Oh, hey, he's dead. What a fight. All right, now with this, we hit uh, probably one of my favorite parts of the whole game. Uh, we're going to be hitting the valve puzzles. So the valve puzzles. Wow, that's actually really good. RNG. This is really good RNG. Wow. Um, the valve puzzle, you have to, it's always the same pattern. You have to kind of mix it. The randomness is the starting positions are different. So as long as you know what you're looking for, it's pretty fast to solve. You know, we kind of do a lot of these throughout the game. How much time do I skip? I think it's like a minute. Normally what you have to do is you have to kind of walk, like crawl around different ladders in that area and turn off the steam. But by walking through it, you just skip the entire ordeal of that. And if you walk into it, you immediately die. That's it. You just, you die. If I was any more into it, it would have been death. All right, now it's going to blow up if I don't get out of here in two minutes. Luckily, the, uh, it's just where I came in. And new horror games, Ghostwire Tokyo. Alrighty. So we've escaped that, and now we hit a very, uh, I think it's kind of annoying for RNG here. But the RNG is now going to be, I need a baseball bat. So let's see if I can possibly get this. I like running with the lighter, because I think it aggroes enemies a little bit more. Uh, if I'm able to get the enemy aggro, that's really good. But I'm going to do a very easy skip. I'm going to walk through this wall. I'm just going to phase through it. Uh, they kind of left the trigger for the valve here, and then it's just me there, so I can skip a shotgun trap. Uh, if you're lucky, you can get the guy to open the door for you. Uh, this guy right here. Actually, hold on. Come here, bat. All right, never mind. No RNG needed. I killed him with a uh, shotgun trap. Uh, I need the bat as a weapon. Uh, having the bat is going to save me a lot of time on an upcoming trick. Uh, the trick coming up is going to be... There's going to be... Also, the chapters are named after the people you're saving. You play as Detective Tap, he's the cop from the first game pursuing Jigsaw, and you're kind of saving a bunch of different people uh, throughout their games. So right now, I think we're on like Jennings or something, and later we'll be going to different characters throughout the Tap's journey. Anyway, the way the skip's gonna work is the baseball bat's a pretty good weapon. It has a nice swing. You can also do it with a pipe in a slightly different fashion, but you know, runner comfort's always nice, so I will be using the baseball bat. But upcoming, there's going to be a mini boss fight. But the trap is going to be you have to kill two dudes and then another dude comes out who's stronger. And then you also have to kill him. But he's on rails and he's on a timer. So obviously the game thought you would take more time of being afraid. But it's actually a really fast fight if you know 
oh, combat's really easy in this game. Uh, I don't even have to actually do the fight, but I do need to kill the main guy because he has a key which is going to open the final door for this level for me. Now, how are you going to get that key faster? Well, I, like I mentioned, I grabbed a baseball bat. I'm going to start looking at the ground because enemy aggro is actually based on sight. So by looking at the ground, I should be able to avoid this. And then I can just go right here. Um, I'm going to rub against this wall. Uh, this guy is going to get angry that I am annoying him. And he's going to try attacking me. That is what I want. And now I'm going to aim. And I'm going to swing through the wall. By doing this angle, you can actually see I am hitting him. And by continuously hitting him with a bat, I'm going to be able to kill him through the wall, which is funny. Uh, but the way the motion works is you kind of want to, like, lean right and then go left. It's a bit awkward. That's it. You tend to know when you get it. All right, that's it. Uh, he died, but he died in an awful spot. I cannot reach him, so I will have to wait for the timer. But you're going to see the glitch. Uh, I can try doing this, though. Let's see if I get it. No, he's too far away. Yeah, he died in an awful spot. Normally, what you want to happen is you want him to clip the door. Anyway, here's Taps Combat. Pop, pop. Oh no, he's dead. Who would have thought? Uh, yeah, normally you'd be able to skip that timer, but we're just way too far away from that door. Uh, he died in a pretty awful spot, but that's kind of the RNG of the game. Also, oh, look, items explode into his hands. Oh no, the bat! This is also why we have an estimate. The game better than the movie. It's on par. All right, so we got the key after waiting. Normally, you can just get it if he dies near the wall, but we got the key now. All right, time for the end level trap. All right, it's going to be something pretty wild knowing Jigsaw. What is it? It's like a mobile game. Can you place the gear in the right spot? It's like one of those advertisements. Oh, gamers can't figure out the level. Can you? But it's just gears. Uh, you have three gears. You have small, medium, and large. Uh, the gear order is always the same for this puzzle, and a lot of the puzzles is how fast can you place the gears. So you can kind of see gear, 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 gear. And ideally, what you want to do is you want to do it fast enough where you are not going to be getting a cutscene uh, while playing this. Um, if you take too long, there's a cutscene of the uh, blade swinging down on him, and you don't want that. Either way, pretty good level. Bop. Barely saved him. Barely saved him, brother. We did it. I can't believe we did it. All right, so now we're entering the next level. Uh, this level is going to be a very important one because we're getting a lot of resources. You have two rooms, blind and sighted. Uh, in this room, you'll be going in the dark. In this room, you have your vision. However, uh, it takes longer, so we're going to be going with the uh, blind side. Um, the whole gimmick of this one is it's going to be a dark room. However, the dark room will also be covered in oil barrels. So. We're going to be turning off the light. Now, luckily, you can actually use the bombs to see where you're going. Um, you just make a quick turn here, and you have to do this in the dark. If you're wondering, how do you ever manage something like this, and how do you know what to do? It is 110% muscle memory. This is where people tell you to practice. When I started running this game, that took me forever to actually learn. I was like, where am I going? I'm going to die. But if you know where you're going, it is super fast. Also, this game does have glitches, funny enough. We'll be doing a glitch right now. This is going to be called The Rise or something like that. We're going to lift ourselves on this tail by rubbing up against it. There we go. We did it. First try. And we're going to do it on the same right here. And we're going to be able to skip a large portion of the game. I actually have no idea how much time it saves. It is a wild amount of time. We kind of skip like whole puzzles by phasing through a wall. And it is super fast. So it saves a very large amount of time. I kind of wish I knew the exact amount. I've never checked, but I know it's a lot. All right, also, we're going to be doing something very cheeky. Uh, this guy has a gun, but he's going to kill himself. So we're going to be getting that gun in a moment. First things first, I actually need to find a valve. We also get the coupler for later, but I will need a valve. I got the valve, so now I can proceed. The room's also poison, and normally the game wants you to like, oh, you have to find the valve and get rid of the poison, but if you just exit the room, guess what? The poison's gone. So you don't have to actually worry about the room poisoning or anything. So I have an extra valve. The extra valve will allow me to do a skip later in the game, which will skip a minor amount of time, but it makes it a lot safer and um, 
actually just skip a decent amount. Like, not minor, it's like a good maybe 30 seconds because there's gonna be a part where it's like, oh, you have to wait for the valve to open. And then poison starts. So it's both safer and faster. Also, look, I can move during this little cutscene. And by doing so, this guy's gonna spawn in. However, he's actually tired of living in this mortal plane. So he's just going to vanish. And that's what happens. Also, yes, it's both. It's a compliment to the movies and a slight against the movies. I love them. Also, I walk on this because there is a tripwire trap right there that is very uh, bold. Uh, if you're trying to just walk through the courtyard... Again, I'm not even joking when I say this. This game is like 99% shotgun traps. If you open a door, shotgun trap. You walk through a dark hallway, shotgun trap. It's all shotgun traps. Guess what's happening right now? You guessed it. There's a shotgun trap. Every waking moment of Detective Tap's life is shotgun traps. This is honestly like a purgatory for this guy. Can you imagine living your life with all shotgun traps? Hey, Chad, we haven't had one in like five seconds. Guess what's going to come up? Shotgun trap. Also, just walking through broken glass. My health is low, but that is okay because in this room there are bandages. So I'm going to scoot past this guy and I'm just going to grab the bandages. Also, we haven't had it in another five seconds. So there is going to be yet another shotgun trap right here. There's a lot of them. Like, it seems like I'm joking. I'm really not joking. I feel like the level design was, is there a shotgun trap here? No? Put one in. So if you can kind of get past that and all the broken glass, it's actually a really good game. Anyway, this is like a huge puzzle uh, called Patience. The game wants you to find the code to this room, but since I know it, I can just enter the room. And once you're in this room, the answer is Patience. And this is actually one of the most clever puzzles to put in a video game. If you're wondering what's the puzzle, uh, let me show you. I'm going to solve this to get a health hypo. I am then going to heal. And now I'm going to open my window because I'm getting a bit warm in my room and I want to be chillier. Yes, the answer is you wait two minutes. Yay, and I have fresh air coming in my room. There we go. Perfect. Don't you love it? So, as an actual horror game thing, this is actually a really good puzzle because, like, oh, do you trust it? It's Jigsaw, after all. Do you trust the puzzle? But, as a speedrun, I like it. It's a literal auto-scroller. You just wait. Close the door, and you wait. No, I'm not going to put in a shotgun trap for being warm in my room. I have long hair and I like to wear flannel. I get warm. That's what happens. But you know what this does? This gives me a good time to check Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Dices underscore Twitch. I felt like that was a very not subtle plug. In fact, it was very blunt. As you go to the doors, oh, you literally can. Bolts are from the other side and locked. Uh, we're going to be going to this door in a moment uh, because this is what we're waiting for. But there is no way of breaking uh, this room. Uh, I, I started, I played it casually and then I started speedrunning it. Um, I wanted to try it out. And God, I love this game. If you open the door, you die. Here's what happens if you uh, the timer runs out. Which, I guess, in theory, you can just die and then do the puzzle again, but you've wasted time at that point. Alright, so now that we've waited, uh, the wall is blown up, and we can get into this hidden room. And this is going to be the room with a dirty toilet. Tap's favorite! No, in fact, it's, an, it's required that you don't wear shoes while speedrunning this game. That's why I'm not currently wearing shoes, so I, too, can be, like, Detective Tap. Does Sega still follow me? As far as I am aware, yes. 
That was the wildest thing that happened in the past few years, by the way. Sega followed me on Twitter. Why? I'm not sure. But they did it. Yeah, you can fail the trap if you're not in the room. Or if you decide to leave the room. Follow on Twitch? Hey, that works too. Uh, also, yeah, I'll say it right now. If, you, um, if you're enjoying what you're watching so far, I stream a bunch of different horror games and horror game speedruns over on my Twitch channel, which you can find me at... Uh, Dices. The name is here. Um, I do a lot of streams, a lot of horror streams, and there's a good variety of games. So if you're ever into any of that, yeah, I do marathons, I do grind attempts for PVs, I do all that jazz. Taking a moment to plug myself since these rooms are listen to tapes and wait. This is kind of the waiting chapter, if it uh, makes sense there. Which Sega games do I run? House of the Dead and Catherine and Alien Isolation. But House of the Dead mainly, I think. I run all the House of the Dead. I run one, two, three, four in typing. I don't run them as often though these days because they hurt my eyes. Also, yeah, you think Tap would cover his arms instead of just jamming needles. You're like, my hair? Thanks. I've been growing it for years. And it's actually kind of funny, and uh, I wasn't expecting this, but with me doing a lot of the GDQ runs, because um, I started running, uh, my first GDQ run was in 2018, uh, at the very end of 2018. Uh, you can actually see the progress of my hair growth if you watch my GDQ VODs. Uh, I did Sonal 2 back in 2018, and then I did um, games later on, I was on couches, but if you ever, like, look at those games, you will genuinely just see, hey, wait a minute, uh, this guy has not cut his hair once since he's been doing any of the GDQ stuff. And I thought that's been quite fun. There we go. And particular game, we tend to run aside from this. Um, we're gonna be doing a couple of the other ones later tonight, in fact. I'll be doing a lot of my personal favorites. Um, I do a lot of the Dead Rising series, the Sound Hill series. Really, if you name a horror game, I've probably done it or will do it. Uh, as well, Parasite Eve will start being the focus because it's Christmas. Oh, hey, this guy's trying to fight. Catherine's a puzzle horror game. Also, Catherine, like, uh, hold on. Catherine, like that game right there. I still don't donate. Yes. However, I couldn't really donate my hair because of COVID. So I don't know when I'm allowed to donate my hair again. Probably soon. But I need to figure out how I do that while I also keep my hair long. Oop. All right. Anyway, this is a mini boss. He has exploding hands. That's his gimmick. He dies. But he also blows up. Fun stuff there. Oh, that boss said we're now going to be hitting the puzzle of this chapter. Which, I'm not- I'm really not kidding when I say it's really just like Jigsaw hired a mobile game developer to make all his traps. And the next one is we're going to slide blocks. I don't run Gregory Horror Show because it's really expensive. Oh, the third birthday? Parasite Eve 2 killed the franchise. That's what happened. That's it. I'm not going to go in any further into that. Also, look how fast he runs. I don't know why, whenever you aim your gun, he's really slow. Also, I like all the TV just saying tap. I like, I like all the puzzles in the game. I think they're quite fun. The gear puzzles, uh, the couplers, the electrical puzzles are really fun. Yeah, it's like, kind of like 2048 to a degree, but it, it's not, maybe not that, it's weird. It's like a, you'll see it. It is a sliding box puzzle. So you'll be on three boxes and you need to slide the boxes within the boxes to make your way to the jigsaw icon. I don't know the name of this puzzle, but it's absolutely just like a mobile game. No, it is not uh, for that one. Parasite Eve 1 is the goat. Because Parasite Eve 1 made a franchise and Parasite Eve 2 killed it. I'm just going to live by that fun fact. I love telling people that. All right. Uh, I got batter on G, by the way. 
This is slight RNG, but the pattern you get uh, changes slightly on the amount of cutscenes you get. I get two now because I got bad RNG. And I tried to condemn? No, but I've had it on the Halloween hotfix. All right, anyway, that one is done, and now we are able to proceed through the game. I wasn't, like, I, what's that puzzle called? I don't know. It's just, like, boxes. As you slide the box, and you don't go over too many X's. That, that's it. Also, I like how the objectives escape with Melissa, but take a while to guess what's going to happen. I'm so there we go. That's just, uh, no, it's not wrong. Parasite Eve 2 is the reason why Parasite Eve died as a franchise. They, Square Enix doesn't have the license anymore. Like, that is an undisputed fact. That's not me being mean to the game. That is, like, straight up, like, Parasite Eve 2 killed the franchise. Does he have a sequel? Yes, it is called Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. Saw 2 Flesh and Blood is the Xbox 360 PS3 game that uh, has you play as Tap's son. Also, Tap and me have the same brain. Empty. Aaron Rule Rose, yes. Um, my speedrun.com profile has the big list of games I run. Um, there's a lot. And I also try to a lot of these commentaries as well on my YouTube channel. Because I... It's weird. I, I notice a lot, like, whenever I try looking at runs, uh, the best way to learn a run very often is the GDQ runs. Uh, if you ever find a game that's been in a GDQ or, like, any other marathon, people tend to be a lot more explanatory. So I tried making a lot of videos on my own for games like this because a lot of people won't actually explain what you're doing or why you're doing it. So, um, I try to do that quite a lot. And... Ah. All right, there we are. So this room right now, the door locks and I turn on the light. You're supposed to know what room to go to by looking in this room, but we're going to be going to that room right there. Also, he picks all the needles at once because he likes it that way. Sansu has fights, but it's all QTEs. All right, shotgun door, by the way. It's a weird situation with Square Enix and Parasite Eve. But we're gonna focus on Saw. If you wanna hear more, I'm gonna do a shameless plug and say you can follow me on Twitch. Also, I got a horrible gear puzzle, my god. I'm trying to figure it from this side, like, my god. No, that's, uh... Is this, even, this is solvable. It has to be. They all are. Hmm. No. I might just reset this one. This is the weirdest puzzle I've ever had in my life. Hold on, where are you at? Yeah, you know what? Just, uh, check. <laughs> I don't. I have never seen that one. That is a. Well made game, right? You gotta love the game. We're back. That's never happened before. In honor of um, the usual host of what would be tonight's show, uh, Kung Fu Fruit Cup, that's never happened before. I'm sorry. This game port is fun. And we needed one of those moments, right? We needed one of those moments.
A true video game. I thought we could look at Tap's brain again. This is why we have estimates. Hey, I mean, it restored the checkpoint. My checkpoint was death. There it is. We can look inside Tap's empty skull once again, though. It is interesting thing to arrive to. Only when you're on GDQ do you get the luck like that. Like, I don't think I've ever seen that bad of an RNG. Like, usually what happens when I get that RNG is I die to the puzzle, and then I uh, just redo it once it loads me back in. Now it's a GDQ run. Ah, yes, perfect. You had to have the that's never happened before. I play this game on PC. This game has a PC port. I believe it was available on a few platforms many years ago, but it's been delisted since. So if you got it then, there you go. There we go. That show has patience. What a what a test. All right. We're, oh. By the way, so I lost my gun. Uh, so let me tell you what I was supposed to do with that gun. Uh, the gun is normally used on the final boss for a quick kill. We can still do a backup quick kill, but I'm, I lost my quick kill for the final boss, sadly. So that's unfortunate. All right, this time, don't give me the worst RNG. B. A. All right, this is definitely easier, I think. No, not you. No, no, no. Let's redo this. See, this is actually one that seems fair and, like, thinkable. There we go, see? Like, that's what it's supposed to be. Something like that. We still got a bad one, by the way. Funny enough, that gear puzzle is 100% RNG. Uh, I have had patterns where it is a literal one-to-one -one connection. There are, like, three gears. And it's like, put one gear in. Okay, now it's solved advanced mathematics. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Jigsaw. Thanks. Very cool. I don't know if there's any available tables for all the answers. In terms of speedrunning, I think there's some for some of them, but not all of them. Like, I know the couplers, um, which are the electrical puzzles, uh, they have them. But yeah, and exactly. Like, that's one that's uh, an actual puzzle. And like, the other one, I had no idea what the solution was meant. I don't even know if it was solvable. It may have been. I got a mean solution for that last one. Because normally you can kind of see certain connections, and that's the way a lot of puzzle games work. It's actually kind of fun to speedrun puzzle games that are a bit adaptive, because it's like, oh, you can save time by doing uh, certain strats. Um, and it's really fun. I like puzzles a lot. I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, but now I speedrun video games online for money, I guess. And I s the glory? My pronouns are he, him. They are somewhere, I think, here. It's always weird when I point at the things, because I don't see the same thing chat sees. All the, all the layout stuff is uh, done by our wonderful tech staff. So they put all the works together for that. So I'm going to give a shout out to uh, tech. But it's somewhere in that general direction, as is my Twitch name. As hair? Thanks. Yeah, I've been letting my hair done more. In the past year, I've been putting it like up in a high top, like a samurai, or I've been putting it in a hat. But lately, I've kind of embraced my long hair. Although, that's only because uh, I had... The... You ever have that thing where you watch a show you really like? Hey! I pointed out my spot? Yay! I did. You ever have that thing where you watch a show you really like, and then you kind of adapt some of the characteristics of the main character of the show you watched? And it's like, I like the way they look with long hair. I'm going to embrace my long hair. I did that. And I've been enjoying my long hair more now because of that. I think it's a nice way to embr uh, embrace identity and all that, but still. Anyway. Oh, 
that is the case. Also, um, I don't want to entirely go onto that topic, uh, Kilgore. I, uh, cause you, you have the right point, but not quite. Um, I get the comments with short hair too. So it's just the general nature of my face and it is something there, but it's never like anything like at this point, it kind of just uh, rubs off for me. Anyway, time for a glitch. I'm not really a glitch, more of an unintended thing. We're going to be running down to our death. And now I'm going to get some speed and run backwards. Uh, that is going to allow me to just damage abuse my way down without taking the ladders. So there we go. I will say though, I do talk a lot about that on my own personal stream. I get in a lot of the different topics of kind of being and just general stuff that I might be aware of. Also, the show is an anime by the name of... Oh, right! That's right, it took all my resources. Because of that checkpoint. Well, that's gonna be bad. Uh, this is gonna be really bad, actually. I mean, not super bad, but... Uh, you guys get to see what I am missing here. You all get to see. Because normally, I'd have a valve for this right here. However, uh, me having to lose all my stuff... Uh, I now have to wait for this door to open, and this is what you skip. So it's kind of interesting that you get to see what we skip. Normally we just skip it. Also, guess what's in this room? That's right, it's a shotgun trap. Also, you can hear Taff cop off his lungs. Isn't it beautiful? I love the ASMR of Detective Tap clacking up a lung. Or anime, it was Kaiji Ultimate Survivor. It is an anime about gambling. Alrighty, time for one of these puzzles. People like these, I'm okay with them. I think they're fun. But I think it's like a different stroke sort of thing very often. Uh, here we go. Uh, arm. And... Uh, uh, you, you. Good. It's a great show, and that's why I've been uh, rocking my long hair. I am. I want to get a brown jacket too. I entirely admit that right now. I entirely dictate my style based on anime characters I watch. That's what people, that's what you do, right? That's how all uh, decisions are made. Oh my God. Yeah, that one. I binged the entire thing in like a single uh, like week. And I was just enjoying it very much. I think that's the case. I, I think that sounds about right. Uh, hold on and good. All right, so this one, by the way, is going to be a lot of the coupler puzzles, so get good at these. What's it called? The Kaiji something? Yeah, Kaiji Ultimate Survivor. Also, I like how this is more about just watching electrical puzzles and less about the, uh... <laughs> less about the run. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see. Get anime recommendations while watching a guy do electrical maintenance. It's electrician work, that's what it all is. All right, uh, hold on. Good. Not good. Uh, there we go. Perfect. I've heard about that on Sonara. I need to watch that one. Exactly, I need to get the Leon Kennedy uh, jacket. That's the plan. Also, I do not know if you can hear the motorcycle outside my house, but someone is hauling down the street. There we go. Alrighty. I will say, though, um, I will definitely say that a lot of the game is muscle memory. So the more you play with the electrical puzzles, the more you know them, the more you're going to be aware of them. So if you practice, you do genuinely kind of get the feeling more. And I noticed this because I lowered my time, like my PV, I think is like a one hour flat. So the more you practice, the much, much better it gets. 
And that's for any game with any trick. The more you're practicing, the better it will be. I've actually noticed myself recently, like, wanting to go back and revisit games and, like, oh, hey, I did a game. And, oh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, we're going to do that. Also, there's a shotgun trap there. We're just going to walk past it. They didn't extend it all the way. Also, our favorite's back. Another dirty toilet. Full of syringes. All right, with that, we're now going to be going to our next little uh, area to cut off the steam. Uh, there's going to be a valve down here. Uh, we're always going to... We don't ever really take the ladder. If we can just fall, we always fall. It is going to be much faster. Also, I get... You bet it. Another shotgun trap. I kind of want to count how many there are. Because I really am curious how many total shotgun traps are in this game that are preemptive, like, meant to kill you. Because also, you can set up more shotgun traps, too. That's actually kind of one of the funny parts. If you wanted to set more up, you totally can. What if the dirty toilet had the shotgun? Of course. What if it did? That is the question. I'll just say there's a lot of shotgun traps in this game. Also, hopefully the estimate should be good. At the very least, I'm only bleeding into my own personal estimates, so it's not really too rough there, but... Still. Also, for anyone who may be coming in during this time of solve the game, uh, we have on deck tonight is going to be uh, just kind of the um, the special bonus speedruns from the crypt. All right, I call it kind of a preview for anyone wondering what the crypt is about. The general idea is horror games, and the reason why I like running the horror show is because I personally run a lot of horror games, and I like to showcase many different people I know from said communities. So you get to watch uh, me kind of go through a bunch that may interest you in possibly checking out more. Because the horror community is a very, uh, you know, neat community of runners. And there's a lot of games you might not think have, uh, what, the dank speed tech? Uh, I... Wrong way. There we go. So it's something to keep in mind. Although, some games are absolutely terrible, which is perfect for Awfully Silly. Um, yesterday, I ran a game that uh, our main character walked at maybe, I think, like... I don't even know the speed. Not very fast. Like, this is blistering pace in comparison to another game uh, that I had a runner by the name of Jew Horse Run, which is called Jew on the Grudge. Which is an absolutely dreadful game, but it is funny. Also, we are going to utilize the shotgun trap now. Uh, there's a tripwire here, and very often by setting it, uh, you can actually cause the trap to get a kill. I don't know what it killed, but it killed somebody. Not who I wanted, but somebody's dead. Also, this fall can potentially kill you. Oh, there it is. I heard it. So what we're going to be doing is I am going to be using a hypo here, because that will heal me, and while I'm following, the healing animation will actually continue. Exactly. All right, also, shotgun door. Uh, I will not be on my main channel tonight because uh, I think after I'm done here on GDQ, it will have been about, I think, four and a half hours of games. Um, normally, whenever I stream my own personal channel, I like to do eight-hour streams. I think it is a fun amount of time. So I like to give my best there. But I'll be back on my regular stream tomorrow for that one, is a question. Incorrect, that game, Guru. All right, so remember how I mentioned the coupler puzzles, the, the electric puzzles, the mechanical puzzles? Uh, you better get used to those because this chapter is all of that. The final boss is all of that. Uh, it's like, I think that is the most important trick in the whole game to learn. All right, let's go. So we're going to have two rooms with four puzzles in total. Actually, five. You have like 20 minutes to solve all of them or something. Actually, the first one looks like three and then the next one's like seven. So you have 10 minutes to solve all of them. Uh, first, we're gonna grab a coupler and then we're gonna be solving the puzzle. Also, there's deaths to getting there. So first things first, uh, this is going to be a grid. As you may notice as well, if you have been uh, watching so far, uh, the grids are indeed getting larger. Uh, each time the grid gets larger, the puzzles will be having new and new patterns. 
Luckily for me, though, you may have noticed uh, I had this puzzle just last time I did a coupler, and it went much faster. The reason why is because, like I mentioned, this game has pseudo-random RNG. And what that means is it pulls from a set amount of seeds. There are only so many RNG seeds you can get. And it's not going to generate a brand new coupler puzzle for you each time. It has like, let's say 15 patterns and those patterns will have randomized starts. However, they're going to be the same patterns. So for this one, I know all these need to be facing this way because they can't possibly go the other way. So if I know that, I can kind of just uh, go much, much faster here. All right, there we go. Also another shotgun trap. Beautiful. Infinite shotgun shells. This is the PC version, yes. I was like, oh, the pig just like, hey, you're next, buddy. Uh, the PC version has a load remover, so uh, it's pretty fair game most ways around. Although we have thought that having a faster computer might actually make the game faster. Just because certain loads, kind of like this with the door seals, open up faster. No, this is live. Uh, the run is currently live. However, chat is pre-recorded. But the run is entirely live as we speak. I got worse RNG. Yay. Wait, what? Okay. That's very interesting RNG. Do not hit me. All right, hold on. That is some terrible RNG. My God, I've never had that. Okay. Hey, another that's never happened before. I get it. It's the name of the show. Uh, where are we at? And honestly, I can just watch the couplers all day. I love this puzzle so much. All right, good. There's one. So here is a slight skip we're gonna be doing for later. I need to find an additional coupler. It can be spawning anywhere in this room or these rooms. Hopefully we can get it. Also, listen at the beautiful ASMR of Tap coughing out his lungs. Isn't it lovely? Wow, I'm getting some horrible RNG. Uh, where are we at? Coupler, valve, nothing. Okay. Luckily, this puzzle is pretty short because uh, they don't want you to die. Also, let's go... Not like that. There we go. Enjoy the poison room. My god. Okay. Only a GDQ, right? All right, we are back. And now you may have noticed as well, the grid is much, much larger than it previously was. Also, hold on. There we go. Uh, where are we at? All right, good. All right, perfect. All right, we're all done with the couplers. We are now gonna be able to move. Was he just waiting at the door the whole time? He was. How was this man able to breathe in poison that much? I never understand that. All right, so now I got the coupler I needed, thank God. I was wondering, was that going to be there? And it was. So grabbing that coupler is going to save me a lot of struggle later during the run. Also, here's a fun glitch. It has no actual value, but this TV looks solid, right? No, you can walk right into it. He's twisted. See. All right. Also, we can't walk a mile in anyone's shoes, Jigsaw. Tap doesn't wear shoes. Also, I hope that you really enjoy the phoning in of the boss fights because uh, now it's just going to be the valve puzzle. Remember the valve puzzle? Now it's a boss fight. Uh, so the way that's going to work is you have to solve three valve puzzles rather quickly. Uh, the answers are always the same, like I mentioned. So luckily, if you know what you're doing, it's very quick. But they kind of just made it three valve puzzles, and I don't know how to feel about that. All right, we are right. And last one. So the way I make these work is I always look at certain patterns. So for this one, I want a long pipe and a short pipe uh, combined. 
and then with that you can kind of see the general idea and like i said it always is going to be the same stuff so once you kind of see it you're going to recognize it and that level is now done don't you worry though because i know it's looking like oh wait a minute are we getting close to the estimate the last two levels like this level is the fastest level in the whole game it's really quick i might ask near the ending what the estimate's going to be by the way they'll decide if i do the long ending or the fast ending also, look, it's Obi. We're going to beat him up because he loves Jigsaw. You have nothing else to do, so it's fun just to punch him. Also, I can't believe you forgot. It's not a dirty toilet. What is it? It's a vat of acid. And he just juts his whole arm in there. Someone pointed out to me a while back that these barrels don't look bolted down in the slightest, so Tap can absolutely just push the barrel down and get the key out. But he decides the best move is... What if I just jam my arm in there, right? Anyway, this is like a big puzzle that's like supposed to be a huge thing, but the answer is 831. All right, I've now beaten the whole level. It is now done. We're on the final boss of this level. Or the final area for Jeff. Uh, I don't know why they gated the whole level on a single uh, lock pad, but there you go. Okay, so now this puzzle is going to be RNG. We have nails and saw. It's going to be a matching game. You need to match the stuff together. Nails, okay, I have saw. Puzzle, heart. Saw, puzzle, heart. Cool, good luck. Saw puzzle heart. What? Jesus Pills. What? Oh, that was hard. Okay. You know, that was really good if I didn't mess that up, because I got pretty much almost all the... I made, like, maybe two mistakes here total. Also, these are all random. You're never going to be getting the same two seeds every time. Jesus oh, I tried. Yeah, he's still not wearing shoes. Detective Tap hates shoes. Harder to without assistance? Would you rather put your arm in a vat of acid? Because that's what Tap does. That was lucky. I literally blind solved that. There's not a strategy. I literally just pick it random when I want. Like, I'm like, all right, let's try these out. And I try to go based on where I'm at. But that was good. Anyway, that's why I'm not worried about my estimate too much. It looks like I'm roughly about maybe an hour or two right now, I think. That's what my guess might be. I have a hypo. I'm not going to have to worry about it. We'll be healing in a moment, and the final boss will be coming up. However, the final boss isn't the final boss. The final boss is actually going to be a puzzle. Uh, I'll probably ask where my estimate is once we get to the actual uh, finale of the, uh, the game. Also, I glide across the wall because that's going to allow this guy to get out of the way. Uh, that guy has a bad habit of body blocking you. If you're trying to do this game and you run through there, he'll just stand in the way. So by kind of gliding the wall while I'm pushing the button, you're able to just bypass him entirely, which is much, much safer. It doesn't look like much, but it is there. All right. So does anyone play the hit horror game Dead by Daylight? I play a lot of Dead by Daylight, and I, uh, I tend to think of myself as a killer main. I like to play killer in Dead by Daylight. And very often when I play killer, I have a lot of people who are survivors who are bully. They bully me. Uh, I'm pretty sure any killer mains can relate to that if you play Dead by Daylight. Anyway, if you don't play Dead by Daylight, or if you do, let me show you a very accurate depiction of what playing Dead by Daylight is nowadays. Once we kind of get to the fight. Oh, no, no, the current time is what I'm asking about. My estimate's a 110, but I don't know what I'm currently at. I imagine it's probably like a 102. All right. So, we're going to be a toxic survivor main in a moment here. Uh, playing survivor is a fun time, if you know what you're doing. We have a really upgraded flashlight, if you know what I mean. You'll see in a second what I'm talking about. All right, so the final boss of this game as an actual fight is the pig. Like the one from, you know, like, like Amanda. But it's not Amanda, it's someone else. You're wondering, why is it Amanda? Uh, why is it not Amanda? Well, let me show you. So, I use the gun here normally to shoot the pig and just kill her. I kill it. I kill. I, I don't know who it is. It's just a random pig. But we're gonna ignore the pig, and I'm gonna run in here. This is a nice loop. I'm going to disable the electricity. I'm going to then run in here. I'm going to close the door, and then I'm going to open this door, and I'm going to infinite loop the pig. 
And uh, guess what? The pig's dead. That's why I call an infinite loop right there. It's like purgatory instead of, you know, the shack. Toxic survivor remains. I can even teabag him. That's the saddest thing right there. I can't believe it. But the reason why that's not Amanda is because the pig dies. Like, you just outright murder the pig. So, it's just dead. So it can't be Amanda. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, that's pretty accurate, I think. All right, so now we're on the actual final boss, which is going to be a uh, series of puzzles. Uh, we have a valve puzzle right now. Uh, same journal ordeal. I tend to look for the long one. In the sh for, it's always like a long one and a small one. Ugly though, you can solve it very quickly. And now we're on the official final area of the game. I think the truth ending adds maybe about one to two minutes more. So I'll ask once we kind of beat this section what we're at. I'm probably going to be roughly around the 110. In fairness, I would have been way underestimate if I didn't uh, have my game crash. But it just happens sometimes, unfortunately. All right. So what's going to happen is we actually have a major speedrunning sip coming up. Uh, normally what you have to do is you have to kind of make your way through like a jungle gym of ladders and steam. But we're going to bypass all of that using a very unique glitch. It's, it's kind of a glitch, but it's kind of not. Like you're supposed to be able to look around and see the patterns of where you might be going. And you want to like avoid all the guys with Molotovs. I actually got lit on fire, but some bad luck. But if you walk right here, you can actually just skip the whole puzzle. You get directly to the ending if you just walk along a very fine line. Uh, it's coded and it is walkable, so you can do that. Also, here's a portion with a budget saw theme song. It's like the budget Hello Zep. And like, you're supposed to like turn off the valve, the steam, but they programmed the steam not to kill you here because you can just run through it. They kind of forgot to program, program in the idea that steam kills you like it normally does. So instead of turning off the valve, I'm just going to run through it because it doesn't kill you. All right, and now we're on the true final boss. First, I'm going to heal because I do want to be healthy. Earlier, I grabbed a coupler. Uh, that coupler is about to come in uh, very much handy because I'm in a room of poison. Normally, what you'd have to do is you'd have to find the coupler in this room. I'm not going to have to do that now because I already found one. I am now going to be going to a nine by nine grid. Wait, nine? I think with seven, seven grid. A big grid of uh, the coupler puzzle. This is actually the final boss, straight up. Uh, they decided to end the game on a coupler puzzle. Detective Tap really had a dark pass as a mechanic. Someone made that joke earlier. And it's accurate, what could I say? Uh, also, you get the sweet, sweet ASMR of Tap uh, hacking a lung. Also, I did that without healing. That is quite actually the best I've ever done that, which is wild to me. I have never had one that good. Uh, what are we at for the estimate right now? Or for the, uh, time? 106.40. Oh, okay, we can do the, we can do the, uh, the, the, the bad ending. The bad ending is slightly longer. Uh, right now, if you're speedrunning this game, you would actually be going over to the Freedom Door. Uh, the Freedom Door is the final action of the game. However, if you really want to go for the free, uh, the truth ending, you can. Uh, since we're at about uh, 107 right now, uh, this will probably take about two minutes. It is quite fast and we should be right on the cusp of the estimate. So the reason why I like this one is I think it's a more fitting ending of the game. Hey, now chat side, thank you. Uh, we don't really need to heal. Uh, we do have a true final boss now. And there might be, you know, you know, the game like Saw? What might there be? You have to understand, if we chose the freedom ending, Detective Tap would have his good ending where he finally loses his obsession of Jigsaw and he's able to save everyone and kind of escape the madhouse. However, we're going for the truth endings. You know Tap doesn't roll that way. So what are we gonna do instead? We're gonna engage with the deadliest trap of all. We're gonna be chowning down dig Jigsaw and killing them. But oh no, what's this? Jigsaw has a combination of a deadly book case. Oh no, I hope I don't die. Oh no, it just kind of nudged me slightly. Oh no. I guess they're made out of, like, foam. Well, I'm sure the next trap he has in store is pretty deadly, right? 
you know, fiery room. There should be danger here. Well, I brought a nail in from last time. So it's one of these. Hold on. Okay, uh, there's the final boss. Uh, now all I have to do is talk to a door and the game will be done. So time is coming up right now. That's time. It's over. Your sick games are over. You're not gonna get a trial you can weasel your way out of. Pleading insanity. All those people you killed. I won't let you kill again. I want you to take a wild guess how the game is going to end, by the way. Of all the possible endings Saw the game can have, what do you think is going to happen? Got a 108.45, nice. You think it's going to be a shotgun trap? Well, we haven't seen one in a hot minute. I can't believe it. It was a shotgun trap. Who would have, who would have ever guessed? <laughs> and then it just laughs at you. <laughs> why did she walk in that room? I don't It seems like she wanted to die to it. Like, why would you go to like a storage shed to try to run away from a guy you think might be trying to kill you? Also, look at the opening of Silent Homecoming because the games use the same engine. <laughs> and that is Saw the Game. All right, that being said, I do hope that you all enjoyed Saw the Game. We do have more games coming up tonight. Also, let's see if my game crashes. It does that quite a lot. If it goes green, my game crashed. But I do hope that you all enjoyed Saw the Game. This is a fun time and a fun game to show. However, I'll be having more games to show you from my repertoire, so I guess uh, just kind of my own personal trip night. So I do hope that you enjoy that. We're going to be right back very quick. We're going to be going over to a quick wellness break. This is time to set up the next game, or time to stand up and touch your toes and get water, drink water and all that. I do hope that you will all be having a great night. As well, if you uh, if you do not check out any of the other GDQ uh, Hopic shows, we have a lot of them up on the YouTube channel. So if you have not checked us out there, go ahead and check it out. It's uh, youtube.com slash games done quick. You can find us there. There's a lot of stuff, not even from the Hopics, but also main events. So go ahead and check that out. Anyway, be right back. All right, we're back from the break, and now I have another game on deck for you. This is a become quickly a personal favorite of mine. This is Dead Rising 2 Off the Record. I've done the 90% on uh, Relcoon's uh, Hotfix, actually. I think there's the community spotlight before. However, this is going to be all bosses. Uh, this is a new game category that takes us from a level 2 file and allows us to kind of just beat all the bosses in this game, which is quite fun. Uh, I like it quite a lot, so I hope that you will like it too. As well, I forgot to mention it because usually I always do the uh, little plug for runners on the show after uh, they're done with the run. But if you did enjoy Saw the Game, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash ecdysis. E-C-D-Y-C. It's somewhere down. Oh, I forgot to put my name up. <laughs> one, one moment. One, I might be a bit dumb. Uh, or did I? I don't actually I think I did. I did. There we go. I did. But yes. Oh no, I, I'm just, I, I, I have pretty wide screens in format. There we go, okay. Make sure I didn't miss anything. I always forget the layout difference. Anyway, uh, this is gonna be a bit weird because you may be noticing I am going to be running. I, I, I was looking the one down here and I realized it's like in that corner over there. So normally we'd begin a, we'd begin a run on a new game file. 
However, the Dead Rising community decided that we are allowed to start at a level 2 file. Uh, the reason why is this skips 3 minutes of knee dropping. There are 3 minutes where Frank West will shatter his kneecaps. As much fun as that is to watch, we're going to be skipping that uh, distress to Frank's knees. You just kind of imagine the battering they've gone through. Anyway, time can begin in 3, 2, 1, let's go. So we're beginning from this file just because this is right after the knee dropping. Uh, this is a file that's achieved level 2, and we're able to kind of just immediately get to the start of the game. This misses literally nothing. The only thing that we miss is 3 minutes of knee dropping. Someone's gonna ask, oh, what, what, is, what does that mean? Don't, don't worry about it, it's fine. We still do have an intro wait, so it's IAOK, okay, and it can explain what's gonna be happening with this game. Uh, Dead Rising is a franchise uh, that is uh, kind of like a zombie sandbox horror game. Uh, the general idea is you're supposed to be kind of getting the scoop of a story, uh, or you're supposed to be kind of solving a case while dealing with the zombies in a mall, or in this case, Las Vegas, or Fortune City. Uh, I will be saying we are actually going to be playing on a mod. Uh, we're using something called the Time Skip or All Bosses Skip for this category. Uh, this is going to be doing all the optional bosses and all the main bosses from a new game file, meaning I am currently on level 2, which I would normally be here after the 3 minutes of knee dropping. Um, but we're essentially starting brand new, meaning I'm not level 50, I have 4 bars of health, I'm immensely weak, uh, the only upgrade that we have right now is one thing to my inventory. Uh, the upgrades are always going to be cemented in, so you all, if you hit level 2, you'll be getting inventory. Now you're wondering, oh, but, but what if you didn't do the knee dropping right? Then you would talk to an NPC and you would get a free level up from Denise. Now, but you're wondering, why aren't you uh, taking pictures of them? Can't you take pictures of them? Uh, no, actually, I don't want to, because every time you take a picture, it freezes, and this is an auto-scroller, so I'd be freezing something and making it longer. Don't you worry though, this game's gonna have a lot of speedrun tech once we're getting into it. I actually really like this game and I think the community has evolved quite a lot. I do want to give an early shout out to runners uh, Deep Zad and Hudson uh, because uh, we've all put in a lot of work into making this category something interesting and I thought it'd be kind of a fun showcase to show you. Anyway, the first speedrun tech is getting, uh, getting the crap kicked out of me. I'm gonna pull on my camera because it makes them more aggressive and it means I won't take knockback. So they can just beat me up to their heart's desire. I'll keep pulling it out as well because it gets them angry because they don't like the paparazzi, as most people don't. Anyway, Frank has now had, uh, like I mentioned, the crap kicked out of him. We've done a great job being the hero. You can win that fight if you want to. It takes longer than losing the fight, so it's much, much faster just to choke. Now, we're beginning to the next section of the intro. You have to make your way out of the danger. Guess what? We're going to be doing this yet again. We are once again going to be going directly into the fire because Frank West is a true hero. By holding the camera, I am going to be taking more damage because I'm able to get the, um, I, I'm able to avoid the invulnerability, and it's quite fast, as you can see there. Anyway, that's the intro. Uh, someone's going to save me, and everyone's going to tell me what a hero I am. What a hero. Good job, Frank. He'll be fine. Don't worry about him. <laughs> Not even level, I can't, right? Not even level 50 yet. I can't believe it. Not even level 50 yet. <laughs> All right, so now we're back at the safe house, and like, listen. I love that the girls are just buttering you up like, you're so amazing, great job. It feels like me walking downstairs to Thanksgiving where everyone's just kind of, hey, you got out of bed today, champ, good job. Oh, It's the saddest stuff. Anyway, we'll be getting the run now. We have a lot to do and a lot to consider right now because Dead Rising 2 off the record is a very intricate speed run now that we're into it. First things first, I'm going to need to gather one million dollars. You can see there's a money count in the top left. Uh, I'll be grabbing a lot of these keys. These keys will have not only money, but also Zombrex in them. As well, if you know anything about the Dead Rising franchise and speedrunning, uh, we're going to be doing a lot with skateboarding. Uh, so we're going to be grabbing three skateboards since these will allow me to have faster mobility. Skateboarding in this game is also the best in the franchise. Uh, instead of having a weak board that breaks in three hits, these boards last, I want to say, like, uh, eight or 16. I don't remember the exact count. But they're beefy boards. Very beefy boards. Uh, as well, while I'm here, we're going to be doing some interesting tech. I can camera cancel. So normally getting up a skateboard, as you will, I'll show you on the next one, is very slow. If you get up a skateboard, you have an animation where Frank uh, dismounts the board, and it just takes slightly longer. However, if I do the camera cancel, uh, I'm able to go much, much faster, and I can get off the board immediately. 
Anyway, here's a looter fight. I'm going to get three headshots on all of them. Uh, they can get knocked down sometimes, uh, but if you just keep shooting them like so, they will die. The looters are now dead. If you did not get level two, you can talk to Denise. She will level you up to level two. That's why I kind of mentioned it really doesn't matter. Another factor about this game is you must take Zombrex every 24 hours. They can account as a main mission. Also, I mentioned once again, the camera canceling is going to be very important for the whole game. Uh, every time I get off the board, I want to camera cancel. As well, to make my board even tankier, what I'm going to be doing is I'm also going to be grabbing a magazine. Uh, this is a sports mag. The sports mag is going to have more of the uses than just this, so it's really going to be nice for that. As well, you may have noticed, I grabbed a coffee creamer. The coffee creamer will be used for a drink later that I need to make. Just consider that right now that I do have it. And in addition to that, I will be putting on a sports fan outfit. The sports fan outfit is going to give me a lot of upgrades if I get the full set. So I'm going to be piecing together the set as I go through the mall. Or malls. Casinos. This is a mall, right? This is less of, like... It's kind of both. There's plot machines, but there's also just shops. Is a mall also a casino? Or a casino also a mall? I don't really know. I don't know nearly enough about Las Vegas to know about this. I'm assuming chat might know. It is the CEO game. You are correct. Alrighty, so you'll kind of see time skip in action. Um, not right now, but at the case 2-1. Um, I mentioned once again we're using a mod. Uh, the reason why is because Dead Rising games natively do not have, well, the base rules of speedrunning. Normally to beat a game to speedrun, you have to be able to beat a game fast. Normally Dead Rising is a game that is kind of on rails, so you, it's on a timer. However, we just mod it out all the time. So what happens is whenever I beat a mission, it'll take me to the next mission. So it's like an actual game. We're not removing anything of value. We still have to beat the whole game. The only difference is now I don't have to wait uh, six hours to do it. While we're here as well, I'll be grabbing a uh, very special tool that's going to help us. And I'll show you that. I'm also going to be skateboarding through the casinos. And also, a weird thing about this game is Frank can skateboard upstairs, but he also can't. So he can ride the skateboard upstairs, but he can't actively skate upstairs. It's kind of weird. But we're going to do some platformings. You know Dead Rising is actually a platformer. People earlier were asking, is it a horror game? Clearly it's a horror platformer, as you can see right here. Alrighty, we do all of this for a sports fan outfit. This is going to give me face paint, red and yellow. We're going to be dressing up as Frank's favorite mascot in the Fortune City sports team. They don't actually tell you what the sports team is. And it is making me a pro skater. Like, they just tell you that there is a sports team. They don't tell you the sport. It's just the team or a sport in Vegas, which I think when this game came out, there were zero sports teams in Vegas. Because a lot of the sports teams didn't get there until like the mid 2010s. They don't actually know what team they're alluding to, oddly enough. And yes, if you would like, again, it, it does nothing. It's just a simple, like, it doesn't really do the game much. Uh, resource will be found on speedrun.com if you want to ever get into speedrunning this game. Uh, like, it uses, per, like, apparently, like, you have to get the game on Steam, you have to buy the game, but you just kind of replace one file and you can remove the time, essentially. And there's a tutorial that we have on the speedrun.com page. All right. But, uh, given the category is all bosses, you may be wondering, when are we going to get to the boss? We're going to be hitting our first boss right now, and this boss is going to be a combination boss. There's going to be two tricks involved in this boss. Uh, phase one is a simple fight. Phase two is going to be using a speedrun trick, and I'll get into that. Also, before you ask, we will be saving the tiger. Everyone always asks, are we saving the tiger? Yes. So, this fight is with Ted and Snowflake. Uh, Ted is the handler, and Snowflake is the tiger. Uh, we have to murder Ted first. Uh, Ted is very simple as a fight. Uh, we're just going to use this LMG that we found up here, and we're going to gun him down. Ted is now dead, and that is good. Uh, Snowflake, however, is still in the arena. I'm going to be ignoring Snowflake because we'll be using a speedrun skip that I actually found. Um, and then uh, Hudson was able to develop the skip. Uh, what the skip is, is it's called Noflake because we don't do Snowflake. We just ignore her. Um, the way this works is the Snowflake fight and all boss fights in this game, whenever you leave the boss arena, their health will recover. It's supposed to be a punishment that, oh, hey, you're leaving the fight, the boss is going to get back to full health like you would. So the boss fight for Snowflake is if you kill Snowflake to fool, you win the fight. 
So by coming back to Snowflake later, the fight will be deemed done. So while I'm not saving Snowflake right now, Snowflake's gonna play around and kill zombies as I just kind of, you know, mess around the casino. Once we head back to the Yucatan Casino, Snowflake will be saved, which will be happening later in the run. So don't you, she'll be saved. Snowflake is the only survivor in the game, by the way. He'll be the only person truly making it out. I guess that's optional, I should say. As well, I'm going to be making a drink combining coffee creamer and a cocktail. This is not actually recommended. I do not recommend you actually do that. It would probably be disgusting. So I don't recommend you do that. All right, and now we are going to be going to the bookshop or the toy store, because that's going to give me a book on skateboarding. By reading, I am now going to have the ability to jump on my skateboard, and I'm going to have a very beefy skateboard. Multiply nine by like 16, and that's how powerful my board is. Needless to say, I'm going to be able to take a lot of hits with this board. Also, we now have the ability to jump, unlike other Dead Rising games. And now we have one last stop we must make. I grabbed the key in the... Oh, by the way, I grabbed a lot of keys, as you may have noticed. Uh, we're going to continue grabbing keys. Uh, the next key we're going to be grabbing is going to be a very nice key. We're going to be going into the sex shop. One for a Viking helmet. Uh, the Viking helmet is here because it has horns on it. I'm going to let you deduce what that might mean in a sex shop. Take a wild guess. Yes, Capcom Vancouver makes jokes. Two, the key 69 here, further including what that might mean. Nice. Sorry, 6900. How could I forget? Now that we've gotten that key, we have one more. We have a couple more keys left to get, but we're doing pretty good on the routing for all our stuff. And as you may notice, I have a full sports fan outfit on. I got the jeans, I got the jersey, I got the hat, I got the face paint, and the shoes. All very important stuff. So, in Base Dead Rising 2, what ended up happening was there was DLC for the game. And what the DLC did was the DLC allowed you to get certain bonuses. Uh, the bonuses were something like the sports fan outfit and other things. Dead Rising 2 off the record added new DLCs, and for the old DLCs, they actually made it so they were a base outfit in the game. So the thing is, while I am using a costume that has power-ups, it is natively in the game and you are allowed to use it. We're going to be using it for a few different reasons. Uh, most notably, this is going to give me a movement speed boost. What, you gonna hang around here now, day? the cool thing about off the record is movement speed boosts are actually tied over to your survivors. So anyone in your party is also affected by Frank's movement speed. So now that I'm able to run slightly faster, Rebecca will be able to run slightly faster. If you understand what this means, by the way, you're going to be quite excited. Also, we're going to drink the trash vodka. Speaking of upgrades that the sports fan outfit has, I can drink vodka. I can drink as much alcohol as I want. I can eat garbage. I'm a true sports fan. It's perfect. As well, any sports weapons will be stronger on this costume. So we're going to have a lot of buffs. Now, I mentioned the fact that my movement speed is tied to Rebecca's. So if I move faster, Rebecca will move faster. What I'm going to be doing is first, I'm going to be getting into a fight with some looters. Uh, they added fights to this mode because they didn't want this just to be a simple escort. So I'm going to be using the LMG right now to just pop down the looters. Now the looters are dead, we are going to be drinking the quick step. In that tiny window, you can see Rebecca run. Now she is running lightning fast because quick step makes you run fast. And quick step also makes Rebecca run faster. So now Rebecca is going to be moving at a blistering pace. This makes an auto scroller a not auto scroller. So it's very neat. We just sped up an auto scroller, which is wild to think about. People dream for skips like this, and we have one because of a weird mechanic in the game. As well, I do want to mention that every level up that we get will be giving us different upgrades. Most of them won't be uh, too much uh, for the matter, uh, but we'll be getting some nice ones later, such as damage and... What's the word? Inventory. There we go. Hurry, this way. Also, if you're wondering, what's the team on Frank's uh, jersey? Uh, it is the... Fortune City Greniers, are Greniers. What I learned from, uh, I guess, uh, people who are French who watch my YouTube videos is uh, Grenier is the French word for attic. So uh, this is what a Grenier apparently is according to Capcom Vancouver. Uh, attics are actually um, Vikings on, or sorry, horses that wear Viking helmets according to this game. Uh, and you can tell uh, the Grenier's thing because if you look at the jersey, you can see it says right there, uh, Grenier's. Which is quite weird. I don't know why it's called the Grenier's. Maybe they thought the name was cool and they didn't do any research on it. But essentially, the sports team is the French Addicts. Also, I don't know what kind of jersey this is. Maybe it's a... 
like I don't know what outfit this would be. Like jersey wise, maybe it's a it's on the front a basketball jersey, maybe? I, I don't actually know. If anyone here knows a good amount about sports, I would actually love to know what jersey this is. And this reminds me of what I, maybe a basketball one is, I think. But I could be wrong. Like, I'm not totally dumbfounded when it comes to sports, but I genuinely have no idea what they wanted to do with this. Anyway, we should have everything. I grabbed the key. Uh, I'll know if I messed up, by the way, if I'm missing money. If I'm missing money, it's gonna be a long walk back. So let's hope I'm not missing money. Oh, perfect. We have all the sports coming out right now. And now we're going to be doing uh, the official part of a time to skip. So we finished 1-4 and we are now able to enter the next area. Also, I'm going to play this very safe coming up. Uh, coming up is going to be, I kind of forgot to get the unproved file. Um, the time skip file, we had to fix it because there is a soft lock that can happen. I mean, to play it very, very safe. Also correct, I was the Elvis guy. Uh, I also run Speedruns from the Crypt, which is a bi-weekly Halloween or horror hotfix on the GDQ channel. We Look at that. If I'm missing a key, I will know, though. Uh, it does lose some time if I am. I don't think I will be, though. Also, we'll be hitting our next bout of boss fights. Uh, we'll see how perfect we're doing. If I mess it up at all, I will wait it out because it'll be safer to do so instead of, uh, you know, playing it risky. Deadly football? Okay, I believe that. I don't think Vegas had a football team until now. I think now they have the Raiders. I could be wrong. I don't think they even had a sports team at all until they had a hockey team. By the way, speaking of boss fights, we're going to be going to our next boss, which is going to be Chuck Green, the protagonist of Dead Rising 2. However, we're actually going to ignore him entirely because we'll fight Chuck Green later. Right now, I don't have good weapons for Chuck Green. Uh, he is a rather difficult fight, so we don't want to deal with that right now. Instead, we're going to be going to Uranus Zone, or Uranus Zone, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, in here is going to be a mandatory boss fight. We have to do this one. Uh, this is going to be a story mission. Also, I do, you do some cool boarding by jumping over all this stuff here. We're also going to be getting some Zombrex from up here. Now, you may have noticed I randomly jumped really high on my skateboard. Uh, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be doing something called a moon jump. By jumping from a lift, you can actually jump super high, like so. And by jumping super high, you're able to bypass a lot in this game. Right there, I bypassed a long section, which would be like a minute of platforming. So by getting it right there, I have now just made the whole section very trivial, which is much, much faster. As well, I'll be grabbing a key here, and I guess I'll be going for the fast route. I probably won't soft lock because I've been doing very well for this run so far. I'm grabbing the shotgun because this will be used for our next boss fight. All right, so since I got that first try, essentially, the boss fight coming up is notably one of the harder ones in the game. I am currently level three, and this boss fight can genuinely one-shot me, so I have to be very careful. The way this is going to work is I will be pumping him full of shotgun rounds. I will then be rolling out of the way. By rolling out of the way, he'll be kind of stuck in this purgatory of trying to attack me up close. However, Brandon is a fool, because I have a shotgun, and he is using a shard of glass. It's like that song by uh, Blondie. Alright, anyway, he's dead, and that is the fight. It's a very fast fight. If you don't get the dodge, though, he will immediately kill you, so get the dodge. I'm also stealing his money. It's nothing poisonal, kid. What's the record of this one? I think a 125 was set recently. Uh, however, we use an in-game timer. So keep in mind, while I might be saying 120 or 140 something for me today, or maybe even a 150, um, I'm more likely going to be getting a 120 or a 130 something. Now it is time for me to get all the money. Also, I hope I didn't miss anything. I might have on accident. If I do, that will be bad. Let's hope I didn't. I'll be able to know if I did. If I lose the money count, that is time loss, but that is okay. Uh, we always use the same keys, so I think it's looking fine so far. We also need a lot of Zombrex. I should be leaving here with three... No, not the bus. Get out of here. I should be leaving here with about $600,000, um, three Zombrex, and we are good. That is the money. Where is the money? 
So that was perfect riding right there. I have all the money now. I have $600,000 roughly. I have a lot of Zombrex for the rest of the game, and we're going to our next fight. The next fight is going to be Suck Green, also known as Chuck Green, if you call him by the proper name. Now, the reason why we don't like Chuck Green is because he is a bit of an RNG fight. Um, there is slight manipulation we can do, and I will try it. Uh, the whole idea is I am going to be shooting Chuck twice. Uh, this is going to get him to turn at me, and hopefully, well, he looks like he's doing his best. What I want is Chuck to get stuck on a wall. Uh, this is good. It's actually really good right now. Maybe. Chuck! Chuck! Don't leave! Don't leave! Getting Chuck stuck is proper. Right now he's stuck. And this is why we have grabbed the six shooter. The six shooter is very powerful. Uh, Chuck can also uh, 100 to 0 me if I'm not careful. Anyway, Chuck is now dead. So that was a good fight. Uh, Chuck is also going to be one of the most important fights in the game. Even in the regular time skip category, we fight Chuck. Uh, the reason why we have to fight Chuck is because we now have access to his motorcycle, which will come in handy later. Also, you can guys see the moon jump in action. We'll have more moon jump tricks, by the way, and they're really cool. They are really cool. All right, as we continue to go, by the way, we are now going to be going back to the safe house because we've done that mission. Now, our favorite survivor will be coming back into action, so don't you worry about her. You know who it is. Anyone want to take a wild guess? I'll give you a hint. She's adorable. What's happening? It's the GDQ hotfix with speedruns from the crypt preview night. I'm doing a lot of horror games to kind of showcase because it works. How important is Freedom Bear? Not at all. You never get it. We do use combo weapons, but it's primarily going to be that. Well, no, right, some of the bosses are the hardest bosses. I will say Chuck's one of the harder ones because he's the hardest for predictability. It's funny because I'm using the word hardest boss, but I mean different things when I say that. Chuck is one of the hardest for predictability, meaning he is more likely to kill your run. Well, he's not, you're not going to die to him most likely. What's going to happen is Chuck is going to be... Yes, he'll be getting Snowflake. Chuck can mess up your run by leaving. The hardest boss in the run, I want to say, is probably the Magicians. Uh, we'll be fighting the Magicians later, and they are by far ridiculous. Also, Deep Zad in chat is one of the Dead Rising runners. I just noticed them come into chat. I referenced them earlier. Uh, they have put a lot of work into this category, as well as me and Hudson. So, if you've not checked them out as well, I highly encourage you to do so. There's been a lot of Dead Rising runners. Right now as well, we do need to go get Snowflake back. Uh, we haven't seen Snowflake in a hot minute, so we should do so. Also, we... look at that. Also, for anyone wanting to know about moon jumping... Yeah, Chuck is very time-consuming. He also can 100 to 0 you. Um, the 100 to 0 happens if he runs over you with the bike. It's very rare, but it can happen. But even casually, you can actually uh, do the moon jumps as well. They're really fun. And maybe it's Chuck by using the six shooter. It's a gun you can find in one of the safes by utilizing one of the keys. So with all the keys in the route, we're going to have weapons and money, which is going to come big and handy. Speaking of which, now that we've been long enough, Snowflake's health has regenerated to max. So we're going to be able to get the Snowflake fight done. So right now, here we go. Snowflake has now been tamed and we are best friends. Snowflake is also the only survivor that cannot be abandoned. Every other survivor in the game you can lose by going to different rooms. They will eventually go away. Snowflake, however, is so powerful that you will never abandon Snowflake. They will always follow you, which is going to be hilarious imagining the imagery. I would love to see a drawing of what's coming up, by the way. What is going to happen is we're going to have a runaway train, and Frank West is going to run after the train and jump on it. While riding a train, Snowflake is going to be keeping up with Frank, just running behind the train the whole time, as Frank West skateboards through an army of dudes. It's going to be hilarious, and I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, time for the fight. This is a recon mission, so we're just going to go directly into it. You don't have to take pictures. It's much faster not to. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to kill this dude. I'm now safe. I'm now going to skateboard through the entire train because it's going to be much safer and will keep me having ammo. I'm also going to be hopping in between because that is going to allow me to kind of uh, avoid some of the harsher areas. Anyway, there we go. We've got to the end of the train and we've stopped the train. Snowflake was keeping me up the whole time. Don't worry. She's a champion. That's just hilarious to watch a tiger keeping up with a train, like an underground rail system. All right, anyway, now that that fight is done, we are able to keep moving forward. 
You're supposed to follow the train, Snowflake. If I was an artist, I would draw that, but I do not have the power. I'm not a very good artist. It is radical. It, dude, it's like a... It's like one of those, like, wacky shirts that has a tiger on it. Just a viking skateboarding on a train while a, tri where a tiger is chasing it. Wait, well, Frank West just runs after it. He's a champion. And right now, we're ignoring the arrow at the top because this way is going to be faster for the way we are going. We're also going to be hitting one of the harder missions in the game. I think when it comes to speedrunning Dead Rising 2, this is definitely the mission that gives people the run for their money. Coincidentally enough, it's called Run for the, run for the Money. Uh, the whole idea is you need to stop a bunch of um, the TK's goons from looting all the casinos. Because while the zombie outbreak is happening, TK is robbing the banks. And you want to stop him from robbing all the banks. Also, fun fact, if you are low on health, do not worry about your health. You'll be getting it back and more coming up. Uh, with our health, uh, Snowflake will level me up to level 6. So I'll be level 6 going into the uh, TK goon fight. Is Snowflake a good girl? Yes. She is now our friend. Snowflake will also be the only person to escape in the main chopper. We'll have no other survivors except Snowflake and, the, you know, the heroes and all that. Snowflake is best girl, in fact. And here we go. It's a tough case. It really is a hard case, especially given that we're throwing, like, three boss fights into it. Not only is it a tough case, we're throwing a lot of fights into this case. So I hope that this is probably one of my favorite sections in all of the run. So I will definitely say I hope that you enjoy what's about to come up. I also got an attack damage increase. That is going to help me quite a lot for the upcoming time. Uh, there's a, I mean, the zombie, ca killing all the zombie categories aren't fun because it's just like driving for two hours. It's never a fun time. You can do it, but people don't really run it because there's not a lot of variance. It's just kind of like driving. This is Dead Rising 2 off the record. Uh, this is a spin-off of Dead Rising 2, where Frank West is the hero. And they put a lot of quality of life options in the game to make it uh, just more playable. Yeah, this is Dead Rising 2 Plus, essentially. Uh, they made a lot of changes that makes it a unique game, but also they added content and they did quality of life options. Uh, it is not a DLC, but a separate game entirely. All right, so now we're getting to TK's goons. Uh, what's going to happen is they're going to be shooting me and there's gonna be a lot of them so i'm going to go exclusively for headshots uh while you can just break the thing uh is going to be much much faster to just um kill them all uh it's gonna be much faster as you can see here as well i'm going to get rid of my gun and we're also going to take the money from each time we call this a finder's fee and now that I've gotten the money, we need one more weapon. You may have noticed I got rid of the gun. I will be actually trading it up for a sword. It's not a katana, but it will do. Alright, as we continue, we're going to be going to every casino in the game and preventing TK's goons from robbing them. Uh, the sword is going to come in handy because we're going to be using it for the boss fights coming up. Uh, the boss fights are going to be a fun time, like I mentioned. Uh, you can see kind of the frantic shooting of everything there. A terror store. I really like the entrance. Um, actually, I guess Yucatan. I think Yucatan is the coolest. You have Snowflake there. You have the motorcycle. There's a lot of fun stuff. But Yucatan, I'd say. We. All right, round two. We're in the slot ranch now. Well, no, it's called the finder's fee. TK's taking all the money. We're taking some of the money. All right, so the six shooter is actually super powerful, by the way, if you did not know this. Uh, it can one-shot everyone with a headshot. So if you're getting good with a headshot and you can call yourself like a cowboy, yeehaw. There's a reason why I'm allowed to say howdy, because I'm a sharp shooter. Look at that. All right, anyway, if you think the headshots are cool, this is what the run has an offer for you. Also, I'm not going to heal right now because while I can, I am actually just going to utilize the level up I'm going to be getting in a moment. No, not that's fine. I'm utilizing the level up I get in a moment, and that will be helpful. All right, I do need to be a bit careful. I might die if I'm not careful. All 
So what I'm going to be doing right now is there's going to be a couple of goons right over there. And then I level up from that. Plus, I kill them because I don't want them interfering with the boss fight. Um, they can, so killing them is going to be nice and easy, and I do get a help. Now it is time for Antoine, the king of cuisine. This is the killer chef who ruins everyone's day. Uh, we're going to beat him by doing jump slashes. When he knocks me down as well, he'll run away. This is actually good because I will be pumping full of gun. And then I will be waiting for another jump slash and a second slash. This is the ideal Antoine fight. He does a lot of damage and is very good against specifically Antoine, as you can see. This fight's normally really tough. He also told me to handle my meat with care. Oh, oh that's bad. All right, let's dodge. That's fine. He's gonna run away, and this might be dead, actually. Oh, God! There, he's dead. And that is the Antoine fight without healing. I'll be getting uh, plenty of help after the fight, but the Antoine fight is actually really uh, tense. Uh, I am on a death hit right now, so what I want to do is not crash my board and not die. So I am going to be eating... I'm going to get rid of the parasol here, and I am simply going... Up. Sir, 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 please, please, get away. No, 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 no. Okay, I get a whole tray of pasta with Frank's face, perfect. The riskiest part's the zombies after Antoine, not even kidding. Okay, so that's the Antoine fight, the king of cuisine. Now you may be wondering, why don't I keep the gun? I'll be getting another gun, and this gun is going to be a lot better for what's coming up for me. Uh, however, I want to play this very, very safe. I can't use all the bullets, I actually want to conserve my ammo. Uh, ammo conservation is going to be super important to what's about to happen. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be uh, murdering a couple of these dudes with headshots. And now I'm actually going to steal their gun and leave my gun outside. Uh, you can actually use any gun you want. Also, propane and propane accessories are quite powerful. Hank Hill is correct in this scenario, as in all scenarios. Now that I've murdered all the mercs, we're going to be breaking this last drill. And we'll be taking the money from this room as well. And in addition, I will be healing. Now, I have a very fun fact here. Does anyone here watch anime? Have any anime watchers in chat? That's for me, my favorite anime that's not Kaiji Ultimate Survivor is an anime called Death Note. I love Death Note. It's a fun show. Uh, I am a pleb and I watch both the dub and the sub. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, uh, if you watch the dub of Death Note, um, the boss coming up is the same voice actor as Light Yagami. So there's your weeb reference right there. Uh, the boss fight coming up is going to be a guy named Slappy. Uh, the reason why Slappy wants to fight you is because Frank West is not going to share his doctor with him. That fixed his knee. Anyway, the Slappy fight, we're going to be hitting him twice with the sword. Then I back away and I shoot him. Uh, that is going to then cause him to fire his rounds at me. I want him to fire rounds because then I can just get to phase two immediately. The general idea is jump slash and hit. And as well, when he's getting up, you want to shoot. Uh, I want to make sure I can serve my ammo. I don't want to use too much on Slappy. I want to make sure that most of my hits will be with the sword. So Slappy will trip whenever I jump slash him. He is the easiest fight if you know how to do this. However, if you don't shoot him getting up fast enough, he will be doing the spin. Uh, the spin is quite deadly, and then he'll follow the spin up with that. Luckily for us, it's a very consistent fight. All right, good. Oh, he's doing it. That's fine. Uh, I'm actually not going to fire him. I'll be up playing safe. And bop. All right, Slappy should be dead roughly about now. Anyway, Light Yagami is now dead, and he's wearing the mascot out, but don't worry about him. I did watch the live adaptation. It was awful. The anime is much, much better. Okay. Anyway, that fight was pretty good. Right now, before I do go to the next fight, though, I'm going to be playing this uh, a little bit safe, actually. I'm going to go right here, and I am going to take this guy's shotgun. Uh, wait. I don't need the sword anymore. There we go. I was like, what am I missing? I am missing an item. There we go. So, now I have guns. So, no traditionally, 
One of the hardest fights in the game was a guy called Randy. Frank? What, Frank? Hey, okay, good job, Frank. Randy is the game's sexual-themed fight. Um, every Dead Rising game has one for some reason. They like including them. I guess it's a fun topic for the games. But Randy's a hard fight because he is one of the most agile and he hits the hardest out of the early game fights. Um, I do think the Magicians are harder because they're a late game fight, but for early game fights, Randy is kind of wild uh, in many ways. Anyway, the way this fight's gonna work is I have to get really close to this guy. So I'm gonna fire Shock and Blast, and I'm gonna roll- oh god, Randy, no! And I want to get a bunch of up-close Shock and Blast on Randy. I kind of want to keep him in this range. And this is why this fight's so tough. Uh, he has a chainsaw, and chainsaws are not easy fights. Although, we do have a good time to post some dance emotes. Alright. If you don't stay close to him, you won't be able to get enough damage out with the shotgun, unfortunately. So this is why I must stay close. Randy? That's bad. You're not gonna kill me, though. And you should be dead. Oh! Randy! No! Oh my god. Randy, you terrified me. Oh my god. Which is that one? That was uh Joe. The fight for that one was Joe. Okay. That guy had issues. Okay, Randy's fight is again, it's a tough one. That's why I was getting close. Uh we're definitely edging on our health right there, so I have to be quite careful. But luckily with Randy, um, the fight is now going to be much easier going forward. Also, we're going to be grabbing a special weapon that's going to assist us with the upcoming fight after that, which is going to be the knife boxing gloves. Uh, this is a combo weapon that I feel like everyone who's played Dead Rising 2 has used, and shockingly enough, it's one of the best in the game. If you're wondering why it is so good, there are many of these around. It does similar damage to another strong weapon, which is the laser sword, and it has more durability than the laser sword. Uh, the only real difference to use another weapon would be if you prefer different attack animations. However, that was the case. Also, I have now used the LMG on the motorcycle, and that's going to put uh, machine guns on my bike. Evading Chuck, I have access to the bike, and the armored van fight is now free. It is no longer be a concern because I can just gun it down as I'm going. I also do want to mention that I'm doing all this from a new game file. A lot of people do think Dead Rising could be rather easy, but we're doing it from a fresh file. We're doing this from new game. So a lot of the fights we have to do take that into consideration. We don't have the beauty of the new game plus weapons, ammo, or health. So it's something to keep in mind. All right, so now, um, if you kind of talk to them about the game, um, the looter characters, uh, they have their own shop. Uh, you can open them up all around. Uh, there are friendly ones, and there's mean ones. This is one of the friendly ones. And we are going to be able to steal the bike here, once again, and we have opened the shop. Also, Frank West could resist a car crash by camera canceling. It is. By the way, I will say, if you have been enjoying the run thus far, I do a lot of runs just like this over on my Twitch channel twitch.tv slash ichdysis. If you'd like to check that out, um, the name should be on the bottom right of the screen. You can find me there. Pretty much everywhere. I post a lot on pretty much all social media. Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. All that jazz. All right. So, now if you don't like anime, who here likes a TV show called Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Because I love that show. Uh, my fun fact now is the next boss fight is going to be the same voice actor as Double D. And Double D is probably my least favorite fight in the whole game. I love him as a character. I hate him as a boss fight. Go figure. Um, and you get some, but not nearly enough. It's just kind of fun. What do you get from New Game Plus? You get a lot of health, a lot of damage. You pretty much get all the upgrades you need. And you get special weapons that one-shot everything. Alrighty. So, time for Double D. Or Double Dork. I'm gonna break his, I guess, car. So Double D is a mailman now. Uh, Double D is the most annoying fight in the game, because Double D is one of the only fights that can infinite combo you on the ground. He also runs around the arena and stuns you, so I need to roll away from his bombs. I want to watch out for his spiral attack, as you can see there. By the way, this has been some of the best RNG I've ever had in a Double D fight so far. Alright, good. I want to go for the double slash and just go with that and that's pretty reliable for damage here really good fight so far like this is i wish i had this recently i had a pv that had like half the glory of this fight 
Oh, there he is. Fine. Oh, that's that's fine. You can definitely hear it when he says stuff like that, by the way. If you haven't heard it yet. Oh my. Double D, stop it. I just complimented you. And he's dead. I broke his pace, I guess. All right. Anyway, the cool thing about that fight is it actually gives me a bonus Zombrex as well. So I don't have to worry about my Zombrex routing. And now it is time for uh, the snipers. So I do want to mention that Dead Rising came out at a very interesting time. And we're going to be fighting a series of bosses who are essentially supposed to be uh, the rednecks who are trying to protect their guns. Um, it's pretty it's pretty hammy if you've never seen the cutscene. I'm not going to show it here because it takes so much time. But I recommend watching it. It's a very fun. It's a it's a fun it's a fun time. That's all I can really say. Anyway, we're going to be fighting all the rednecks. Uh, the rednecks are going to be sniping us from roofs, and we need to stop every roof. So we're going to start with this one. This is Johnny. I like to call him Johnny America. He's called every American character Johnny America. And the way this is going to work is the snipers have two modes, melee and range. In melee mode, they're very easy to dodge. I actually want to stay in melee mode as long as I want, because while I do take damage, it's very minimal. I'm actually eating a lot of hits from Johnny America here. Hey, Johnny, I'll stop it. There we go. That's what I want. So kind of like that, uh, just weaving in and out. I am getting a lot of hits, though. I'm getting a lot of damage out, but that's fine. Now, the reason why I want to be careful with the actual, uh, the other mode is because if you're not careful with uh, range, uh, they can go into what I call hyper mode. Uh, what hyper mode does is hyper mode makes it so the snipers will rapid fire their gun at you, which is incredibly bad. Also, I like how he died the same time I hit him. Also, we're going to uh, chug a whole thing of whiskey for my health back. And we'll also take one for safety as well. So what's going to come now is one of the worst sections in the whole run. I'm going to get rid of my boxing gloves. However, I will be taking a stick of dynamite because the stick of dynamite will come in handy, unfortunately. And the dynamite should be right there. So I have a pretty safe strat for the other rednecks. Uh, also, one of the rednecks is named Big Earl, but it's not the one you expect. Whenever I hear the name something like Big Something, I kind of expect him to be a big guy. But no, uh, the big guy is named Derek, but the Big Earl is just some old dude. And it's uh, he's not even an old dude, he's just like a regular guy. It really makes you wonder why they call him Big Earl, but I'll never truly know. Although I will say Derek has the greatest outfit with like measuring tape suspenders. So the way the Derek fight's gonna work is I want him to fire at me and he immediately went hyper. So the strategy is if he goes hyper and I hide behind this, he will rapidly fire at the wall, which works if, oh, uh, hold on. There we go. There we go. So right now he's trying, uh, that's what I call hyper. He will never stop firing. It is a rapid fire, but luckily I can just kind of pelt him from behind the wall. And I do try to make sure I readjust my aim just cause if I don't, oh, that missed. Uh, okay, good. So it's a fun strategy to kind of cheese the fight. All right, barely ran out of ammo, but that works. Regular, you know, regular Earl wouldn't be a very good name, would it? Anyway, that is the Derek fight. Uh, Derek's not too bad, but he definitely does have a bit of uh, trouble there. All right, last but not least. Oh, he still have two more rednecks to go. Also, you may notice I, need, I said I needed a million dollars. Right now I have uh, 900,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and I'm going to grab uh, some meat. Uh, what the meat's going to do uh, is that will allow me to make a weapon called dynamite. Uh, this is a safety strat. You don't normally want to do this, but sometimes you just sort of end up like this. You can also try to fist fight the boss coming up if you want to, if you want to do the boxing gloves or the laser sword. However, instead, I'm going to be doing a really safe strat, as I do think the snap rifle does do a little bit more damage. Anyway, I have now made uh, dynamite meat, which is a lure for zombies that will hit them, if, uh, hit them with meat and explosions if they decide to pursue it. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be going not here, but over here. There it is. And this is going to net me a car. 
We don't need to take any pictures in this game. We need zero pictures. I'm going to run over as many zombies as I can. Uh, as you can tell, I really do not like the zombies here. And this will kill them immediately. The zombies are really bad at what they do now. So, what I'm going to do is that, and then I'm going to take my dynamite, and I'm just going to toss it over there. Go get it. All right, now Big Earl will be sniped from right here. Uh, what will happen is from this angle, uh, Big Earl will constantly be missing his gun. As well, I am constantly going to be checking the area because I want to make sure that no zombies will be hitting me while I'm fighting Big Earl. There's one right behind me right now, so let's kick him. Got your nerd. Up oh, now he's hitting me. Fine. Thank you. Big girl, thanks, buddy. Oh, wow. No, no, no. Don't hit me. All right, good fight. And we drink the whiskey. Snowflake is safe in the safe house. Don't know about Snowflake. And then after that, what I will be doing was I will be making another boxing glove, which is right here. All right, that fight was risky. Uh, the zombies are the most annoying part. After that, you're home free. Here we go. We get the boxing glove out. Also, I hear pawing outside my door, and I think my dog might be trying to get in my room. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. You'll have to wait, unfortunately. He can join me later. Anyway, we're going to be entering this shop, and we're going to be making a combination of beautiful drink. Whiskey and whiskey. Delicious. It's whiskey and whiskey. What that makes is a drink called Painkiller. What Painkiller will do is, well, I mean, it says it kills pain, so it will fully heal me when I am low on health. And as well, I will be... What's the word? I'll be gaining, essentially, immortality. I'll be gaining times two health later on. And that's gonna come in handy. Anyway, here's Deets. Yes, I know what the name Deets sounds like. You can make the joke, it's okay. We do it all the time in the Dead Rising community. So Deets is the last sniper. Um, I don't know if the snipers have different stats. Um, they all feel mostly the same to me. They do the same attacks. They do the same stuff. Go. Oh, he stabbed me. If they grab us as well, they can do that. And For a lot of stabs, you didn't lose a lot of health there. Oh, stop it! go all right now you're dead good now eat some snicky snacks okay now i've got the snacks we are now good to go and i learned this one recently from old thieves and hudson but there's actually a better route that i have not been taking because i'm a dummy uh what's going to happen is we're going to be going to the hotel next and since i already made the uh drink i had this is gonna be fine There we go. And up we go. Earl has like 30 more HP. That's funny. Well, he is big. Yeah, the world record right now, I believe, is Hudson. Hudson is the current world record holder, to my knowledge. And he has a 125. But it's still a pretty new category right now. Anyway, time for the next boss fight. Uh, this is going to be uh, a mall cop who's... It's like a bad version of Paul Blart mall cop. His name is Seymour. Uh, Seymour's kind of rough because he's really good at stunning you, but he's actually a really easy fight. Uh, because very often he won't even hit anything. Uh, the whole thing with Seymour is melee is your friend. Seymour is very good at fighting range. Because what he'll do is he'll fire the gun out of your hand. Uh, we're gonna play it nice and safe. We're gonna drink our beverage. And with that, I now have times two health. The health value is gonna be pretty nice for me because, well, now I don't have to worry. Uh, as many hits as he does, I'm not going to be losing a single drop of health. How do you make the skateboard? You don't make it. You just find skateboards in the sports shop. Well, we're actually be getting a board refresh soon, too, because my board should be running dry. All right, Seymour is now dead. 
Alrighty, I'm now gonna be taking the six shooter and I'm also gonna be taking the beer. With both the beer and the six shooter, I'm now ready for the next boss. I forgot to grab the money, and I'm glad I reminded myself. I do this every time I run this category. Good thing I have a great memory, right, chat? Superb memory, in fact. I definitely wouldn't forget about the money. So I was supposed to do this right after Derek, uh, but I always kind of forget. Uh, we need the rest of the money. The board does need a wellness break. You are correct about that. Anyway, luckily it's not too big of a detour right there. We are now good to go. And we're gonna be going on to our next boss. This is going to be a weirder boss because you don't quite expect it to be a boss. Uh, we are going to be fighting a character by the name of BB. However, BB is more less of a boss and more of a fetch quest. So for BB's fight, I'll be putting on a tuxedo. Uh, you'll see why in a moment. Uh, BB's fight is kind of weird. Uh, her fight is going to be, you need to do a bunch of things for her or she'll kill people. I am not going to be uh, doing, well, all of that, I should say. So there's BB. What BB wants is she wants a beverage. So I grabbed her drink already. She wants us to be wearing a tuxedo and she wants us to get her an audience. So chat, you need to show up for BB. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. BB Love makes the rules. Oh, she also pounded that beer like a champion. I can't believe it. Now, the thing with the gathering zombies is it's going to be a little bit rough, but we're gonna be trying our best here. The zombies should be able to follow this. I actually found recently that there is a very good strategy that if you throw around the zombies on something, they will actually follow it. So this kind of reduced a bit of the RNG in this category. Because before you kind of just had to hope to God that the zombies would follow you. Now if you kind of go in the hordes of zombies, they will continue to follow you. So now I can start throwing things on the stage and they'll be able to follow them. Hey buddy, stage is over there. You too. And I think it's BB all of her fans. We'll be doing one more game after this and that will be a different game. All right, a little bit more. This is a strat I found on accident. All right, so now it is time to play BB's fight, which is a rhythm game. Well. So I guess post your favorite dance emotes. Also tag yourself. I'm the fan who's confused on the stage. Which one? There's usually one that's like turned around. I'm the guy who's turned around. I'm that one. I see him. It is DDR time. I don't remember Blake for. Alright. And it should be done. It's pretty much like Space Channel 5, kind of, yeah. And now BB flies. Anyway, that's the BB fight. Uh, BB's not going to die to zombies. You can save BB if you want to. We don't need to, and I don't want to. So BB is now going to die of old age. Don't worry about her. She'll be okay. Funny enough, you can actually, um save BB, and if you don't bring her to the safe house, she dies faster. I'll be getting my clothes back. Uh, you can also not get your clothes back if you truly wish to, but I like getting my clothes back. It feels slightly more reliable for me, just on the base movement speed. Although it's probably minor either way if you don't get them or you do get them. All right, so like I mentioned, I did need the one million dollars, and we have the one million dollars. How's it going? Hope you're doing good. The one million dollars is going to very much come in handy because uh, the entry for the next boss fight is one million dollars. And in order to do the fight, you do need that. Luckily, we do get the money back later so we can actually use the money for on things, but it is something that is a requirement. As well, I'll be getting my next boss fight weapon, which will be the LMG. 
So, the way the LMGs normally work, by the way, because you may have noticed I've used like five of them by now, uh, the LMG will always spawn in set areas if you don't have an LMG equipped. If you have an LMG equipped, it will not spawn. So if you ever want a fresh LMG, you can leave like this area in the Yucatan and go back here and it'll always be there. All right, anyway, it is now time for the nightclub fight. Also, you, this fight has a very dated reference. Let's see if you can notice it. All right, we're gonna kill this one. It doesn't matter which one you kill. Either way, you do need to kill one of them. That is what's important. There we go. Uh, you can pick your favorite. There we go, almost done. Out of the way, get out of the way. If you're wondering why did I pick gold, I don't really pick gold, I just sort of look at gold, so I, that's what happens. All right, and now the fight is done. You only must kill one. There we go. So now I've killed one of them, the other will now fall as well. Um, it's You kill one, you kill both. It's one of those fights. So their health is tied together. All right, and now we have the most interesting boss fight. So this is the easiest and the most interesting because you're going to be very confused. Do not blank coming up on the fight. Does Frank need the donation? Just maybe. The way it's going to work though is that we're going to be fighting a helicopter. And this is always my favorite fight to show people for this game. But the helicopter fight is going to be this thing where it's you know gonna be flying all around the area. You have to gun it down or you have to try to take it out. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that like at all. I'm just gonna entirely ignore it by kind of breaking the game. And this works on all copies of Dead Rising 2 off the record and Dead Rising 2 base, uh, if you know what you're doing. I'm gonna get the money fight, uh, the money back after the helicopter. Uh, once the helicopter is all done, we'll be getting our money back. What was the outdated reference? The name of that last case. You can go back and check it. I'm not going to say it. Okay. So. Once I enter the hotel, TK's goons will be guarding the elevator. I do need to kill four of them. I saw the six shooter. It'll be quite easy for me. And Dead Rising 1 and 2 are amazing games. Uh, they've become some of my favorite speedruns to do for good reason. I played them a lot when I was in high school and when I was younger, and I play them a lot now. Not much has changed. All right, anyway, we have the goons. They all die to one shot with this gun. There's also the last goon. The last goon you don't need to kill. You can actually just walk in the elevator and you push the button, he leaves. Oh no, I only have one health. However, will I beat this boss? Don't blink. The boss fight's coming up right now. If you blink, you will miss it. So I use the toy ray gun to break the helicopter because toys in this game do an immense amount of damage to the helicopter. The reason why is because the game has throwable weapons doing a very base amount of damage because they don't want you to be screwed going into that fight. However, all of the toy gun missiles count as throwable items. So essentially imagine Frank West shooting like 10 lampposts at once at the helicopter and that's what I just did. So that is why the toy ray gun works. In base Dead Rising 2, you end up using the spitball gun. It takes slightly longer because the rate of fire is uh, lower on the spitball gun, but it still does a lot of damage. All right, time for a very fun mission, by the way. Also, I am now ready for a board refresh. So I've been using a board pretty well all game long. I'll be getting a new board and we're gonna be getting some new weapons and some new resources. We also have a really cool skip coming up and I believe this is found by Deebs and Pokasol. But uh, we're gonna be kind of just going out of bounds. And it's fun that a Dead Rising game has an out of bounds. There are two of them that do now. But first things first, I'll be buying the Lambo and the car key. That is what I use my money on. As well, I'm here, I'll be grabbing a coffee creamer. Also, good news if you don't like the timer, but you like the sandbox. Dead Rising 2 off the record has a sandbox mode. Uh, I think the optional thing you can do during that is there are a bunch of like challenges and the challenges are like, oh, kill zombies. And you can also just mess around with no timer. That's also why I like this game. It has a sandbox mode, which is quite cool. 
All right, so here is the skip coming up. Uh, I have boxing gloves, but I actually want... No, give me that back. I actually want new boxing gloves, funny enough. So I'll be going in here, and I'm going to be making a fresh pair of boxing gloves. Uh, the reason why is I will be needing these for at least one more fight. And I want to have them. Now, the way the skip is going to work is I'm going to be using a moon jump, and I'm going to be going out of bounds. So by doing a moon jump right here, I can go over this wall, and I am falling into the void. By falling into the void, the game is going to toss me at the back area of the plaza, and that is where the boss fight is. So I've just saved a lot of walking time on the Evan fight. Okay, now it's time for Evan the Clown. This is a clown. He is on stilts. Uh, he has two phases. Phase one, he will throw grenades at you and fire his ice gun. Um, the movement speed that we have is quite nice. I want to make sure that I'm kind of just moving in lines, depending on the attack he's doing. I do not want to be going in a straight line, and I do not want to be going slow. I need to keep my distance, or else this will happen, and he will hit hard. Uh, he crushes me with his foot. I know a lot of people like a, a tall, a tall being such as this crushing them with their foot, but I don't know if I want Evan the Clown doing that to me. He's not very nice about it. He kicked me! All right, so in a moment, he'll be going to phase two. Uh, phase two is uh, kind of funny, because uh, we knock him off his stilts, and now he is angry, and he's going to be charging us. And the music ramps up. Also, I'm going to end this fight fun. We're going to punt him. And now he's dead. <laughs> there you go. Good fight. Yeah. All right, good stuff. And now I will be taking the motorcycle up here. Exactly, it's the, it's the prototype Lady D. You figured it out. That's what Evan the Clown was meant to be. I like punting him, it's fun. It doesn't get out of day. I could have killed him faster, but I thought it would be funnier to punt him. Okay, and now it is time for genuinely, I think, the hardest fight in the whole run. The only reason I am going to say this over any other fight is because this fight has two people. Not one, but two. And both of them have unique mechanics. Imagine fighting two bosses and both of them hurt. This fight is going to be rather rough, but that is okay. So, I'm going to be getting some resources right now. For one, I am going to be grabbing the LMG. There's an LMG up here, and I want it. So, LMG time. It is a reliable weapon, and ideally I want to keep it. It's nice to have just in case for safety reasons. Two, uh, I'm going to be getting a bottle of wine. I'm going to chug it directly here, as one does in Vegas. Okay, and now begins the fight against the magicians, Reed and Roger. I'm going to get my Blambo equipped, and we're going to get ready for the fight. So, the way this fight works is Roger is sensitive to explosions, and Reed is sensitive to getting hit in the back. You know, I'm, I'm also kind of sensitive to getting hit in the back. The way you discover the mechanic, by the way, is that when Reed attacks, Roger will get scared. Luckily for us, though, it actually chains with the Blambo. Also, Reed is being very mean to Roger, but that's good for me. Oh my god, Reed! Uh, this is gonna be bad. Hold on. Let's heal. Also, enjoy this song. Favorite song in the game. Don't hit me. That's fine. Alright, so right now we do need to find, uh, Roger. Uh, we don't deal with the read later. Roger's the important one to get down right now because Roger will run around the arena. There he is. I got him. He's in our sights. So once again, we scare him and slash him. And I can probably just kill him with this, actually. All right, now Roger is dead. Now, the way Reed works is Reed will be able to take hits to the back. So we're going to be playing Assassin. Uh, I'm going to get him stuck around this kind of little uh, slot machine, and Reed will not know what hit him, because I'm going to slap him on the butt. Fat. It's going to be a consistent case of running around and slapping him. Uh, he'll never know where I go, as long as I'm kind of moving properly. All right, good. And there's a hit. I don't know why Reed, Reed's weakness is his back, but Reed's very sensitive to his back, and this does a lot more damage than anything else. Like, you're getting... Oh, God. Alright, he's going this way. Got him. Oh. 
All right, uh, you should be dead in a little bit here. It's a very fun fight. You just sort of loop them around. We're actually a toxic survivor again. I mean, if he didn't want to be killed, he shouldn't have turned around. Slap. And Reed is down. By the way, that's probably the best Reed and Roger fight I think I've ever had. There we go. They're now down. As well, I'll be able to utilize some resources to help me out coming up. Also, all the Dead Rising games are currently on Steam. I don't need that. We can keep everything else. And I'm going to be grabbing one more thing. And this is going to be a little bit unexpected for... Oh, don't fall. Don't fall. Thank, Thank you. All right. I'm going to be grabbing a magazine. It's called the Juice Boost. Now, I haven't really been using much juice outside the Quick Step. However, I actually use the... Uh, sorry, I use Painkiller. But we'll be using our next juice. The next juice is going to be Quick Step again. However, it's going to last a lot longer now. Is it possible to roll the record? Yes and no. I don't know. Because GDQ time tends to be with RTA, real-time attack. Uh, for Dead Rising, we use an in-game timer. So there's not really a good way for us being able to tell unless I had my in-game timer running, but I do not. So I don't actually know. But I do attempts on this pretty often, so if you'd like to see a possibility roll the record, you can uh, check me out on twitch.tv slash Ignisus. The shameless plug, you gotta love them. All right, so now gas zombies have infiltrated the game. Gas zombies are annoying. They breathe on you and then you pass out or you get stunned, which is annoying. You don't wanna deal with it, but we will have to. I'm gonna be making quick step by combining coffee creamer and orange juice. First, ew. Second, I'm also gonna be grabbing a shotgun. I'm not sure either. Like, this seems like a good run, but I wouldn't be able to say much. I think my last PB had a 141 as the uh, real time. But even then, I don't actually know. I don't, no, no, we use a custom, we use a community driven uh, one. That is the case. It's a clean run, though. This has definitely been a good run. I just don't know what the actual time is. But I probably PB if I get less than a 141 on my real time. Pretty much. All right, so I have quick step, I have guns, and we're gonna be hitting the next fight. Uh, this fight's one of those fights that's really easy, but casually it's kind of hard. Like, casually people tell me all the time that this is one of the hardest fights in the game, but it's not, because you can just kind of uh, play the dance game with him. And the thing with Boykin is he wants to melee you in close range, but he also wants to avoid getting hit. So he'll be a Dark Souls, we're the Dark Souls boss and he's the player. By doing this, Boykin is going to stay in range. And he's either gonna wanna melee me or he will just be doing this. Bo Boykin, you okay? Boykin, you okay? Boykin. He's trying his best, Chad. All right, there he is, he finally did a kick. Normally he throws melee attacks, but uh, took him a bit. So if you stay close, you can kind of play this dance with him, but if you're uh, not fast enough, you might get hit. Luckily, we have the sports fan outfit, and as well, I don't want to get far away because I'll get shot. And thank you. Yeah. I do a nice time, my own personal stream, and a lot of the kind of skill from that kind of carries over to the hotfix nicely enough. So I do hope that you enjoy that. PB? I might PB, actually. I have no idea, though. Either way, the quick step uh, lets me carry Rebecca really fast. Uh, this is why I need Quick Step. Quick Step is going to make it so I just breeze past here, which is nice. Uh, and Dead Rising 2 base, oddly enough, there's a car. But in off the record, there's not a car, so you have to walk back. Uh, which is why we use Quick Step. As well as something unique to all bosses, I'm going to be utilizing Quick Step, uh, the Juice Boost, in order to just sort of make, make... Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't go that way in the future. It makes it last longer. Also, you may have remembered that I spent a million dollars on a car. Why did I spend a million dollars on a car? Let me show you. Subscribe to Dices on Twitch. Well, if you say so. I'm for off the record because I like Frank, I like the quality of life, and I think it's just more fun. However, two is not bad. I don't think two is bad at all. I just, for speedrunning, I would rather do this game. 
Also, this game has the all bosses mod. Dead Rising 2 base does not have an all bosses mod, which is another reason why I don't really play it as much. There we go. All right, so we're now going to take the car. Uh, the car is going to allow us to move quite fast. We're going to drive through here with Rebecca. And this is why we bought the car. It's a very creative solution to a problem you didn't know we had. Also, if you park the car slightly uh, to the right, Rebecca will actually get out from the back or from the side, which is faster than her getting out on the other side. Alrighty. Uh, we're pretty much just guessing. Like, if I have under a 141 real time, that means I've PB'd, but I have no idea what it would be. I have a 129 right now, but, like, unless it's, like, five minutes ahead, I probably didn't massively PB. My dog has started barking outside my door. He's waiting. Oh. All right. He's a rude dude, chat. My dog is a rude dude. All right, so I get to keep quick step, and now we're going to run. This is why quick step is nice. Because now we'll kind of just be running through this whole thing. And we have to get three things. We have to get the... Uh, we have to get the generator, a spool of wire, and a gas barrel, I believe. Uh, by getting all of these, I'm going to be able to get the door closed to this section. Now, there's a weird thing where the game will actually soft lock, and I don't know why. Uh, it only happens on my computer. I'm buying a new computer soon, and I really hope that it will not have any issues with that. There we go. And not bad. And one more. Okay, so the soft lock that can happen is for some reason the camera angle won't shift back, and I don't know why. What, the way to fix it is you have to swap over to single core. Also, uh, I am McDysis, that is the runner. I guess I can link my own channel. You know, I'll link my own channel. You know what, since I have the alt tab anyway, I'm gonna, you know what, this is absolutely imperative of the speed run. It is absolutely imperative. If you wanna find me, you can find me there. There you go. Anyway, time to alt tab so I can change my core. I am going from multiple processors to a single processor. Uh, this is something that removes the bug. I don't know why. It's a very unique bug, but the way to fix it here to remove the infinite loading is you have to go to a single core. This is going to make it lag like hell. I don't know why it does that. Um, the way to fix it, though, is rather quick. And then once you're done, save house secured, uh, we can now actually swap back. I'll enjoy the cutscene for a moment while I swap back. There we go. Exactly. I mean, I, I, very often, whenever I host any of the uh, speedruns in the crypt, I like to shout out the runner. So shout outs, to the, shout outs to the runner, right? Haha, <laughs> get it? It's me. <laughs> Same principle. All right. So the important thing to do right now is you need to give TK Zombrex. We are nearing the end of the game, and it's very important that TK gets Zombrex. He is the new, uh, the overtime. He is going to be the uh, final boss. But the only way to get TK is you must save TK. It is a neat bug that it goes to an infinite loading screen. The only way to fix it is by doing that, or it doesn't happen to you. I don't know why. Also, luckily for me, I replaced my board earlier, so I'll have very... I've been boarding really... This has been a really good run, by the way. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, this run has been shockingly good. So I'm kind of happy with it. Is Snowflake okay? Yes, Snowflake is A-OK. -okay. And you wonder know what happens to Snowflake at the end of the game? Frank West will get an emergency chopper, and that chopper will allow Snowflake to escape to safety. He probably goes somewhere nice. I don't know, she lives with a rich celebrity and gets steak every night. Let's go with that. And she gets to roam the world of Lost. I guess she's supposed to be a Mike Tyson reference, actually. There we go. Marathon luck? The marathon luck I had earlier is when saw the game crash, and I got the that's never happened before moment. 
All right, so going underground, surprisingly enough, there's actually an entrance right here. And we're actually be hitting the hardest boss in the game. I'm not gonna lie, I have lost a run to the upcoming boss. And obviously I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm joshing you here, but the upcoming boss is going to be quote unquote, the toughest boss in the game. It's weird because you don't think that these bosses coming up are even bosses, but according to the game's code and like everything, they're bosses. And it's really weird that they are. Anyway, we're going to be going up here and we're going to push this button. Uh, that is going to open the door and now I'm going to be murdering some of the Phenotrans uh, mercenaries. The LMG is also a nice weapon here and you gotta be quite careful. These guys can be annoying, but luckily if you get the kill, it is free. Speaking of being free, right now what I'm going to do... Actually, let's heal. Let's play it safe. You know, I have died to these bosses before. We're gonna eat some fries. Also, don't you eat fries like that or eat the whole box from the side and then just get the fries from out within? All right, so the boss fight is a couple of nerds. We're gonna kill them. All right, they're dead. Tough fight. I have died to that fight before, though, by the way, so I am not kidding. I have actually died. I kind of cried when... I didn't cry, but I was definitely sad when it happened. And yeah, Dead Rising 1 to 4 is fun. I've been doing that a lot more. Once a month, I've been trying to do Dead Rising 1 to 4. And you might be right. It might be a Siegfried and Roy reference. But it's weird, because I think the Magicians are also a Siegfried and uh, Roy reference. How do you find that fix? Uh, Hudson found it. And then it started happening to me, because it originally didn't happen to me. I have no idea why it started happening to me. It just started happening. You eat the box? We well, need the poppy mode to eat the box. I eat the box. All right, we're now hitting the first final boss, which is a cursed fight that is a product of its era. Mm, look at that. The reason why I say it's a product of its era is going to be the boss fight music. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is, but I hope that you enjoy it. We won't be watching the cutscene for that, though. I will say that. I will not be watching the cutscene. Also, anyone who is wondering, I will let my dog into the room uh, before the last run of the night. He will be allowed to enter the room. You may even see the dog tax. There we go. Hmm. Good stuff. And you'll see. That's all I can say. You'll see. Alrighty. Now it is time for the final bosses. Is this scheduled from Wednesday? No. So speedruns in the Crypt will still be happening on December 8th. We'll still be having a show then, and that will be a, a nice episode. I'm already, I already planned it out. It's going to be fun. Also, I don't usually run on my own show. Normally, sometimes I will do runs. However, normally I try to find many runners in the horror community. Uh, this is rather a last minute pop-up show. So that is why I am running games for you to kind of show you that while I do host a show, I also do run quite a lot of games. I do hope that you enjoy them. So, yeah. Again, if you're ever interested in any of the content, like for uh, in terms of the GDQ side, uh, I have horror runners on all the time during speedruns from the crypt. It is a bi-weekly ho horror hotfix every other Wednesday. So next Wednesday we'll be back for that. Also, I'm not on my normal stream tonight because um, I'm doing this for GDQ. And all of you, where you get to see this. Also, I went the wrong way and I'm a dummy. Unless you upload to YouTube, it will be uploaded to YouTube. That's okay, my muscle memory took me the wrong way. So, a neat part about this game is right now, um, Fino Trans is trying to take all the zombies and make money. Are there any of the Resident Evils? I do, but not often. I like Resident Evil as a franchise, and I might be running RE6 soon. However, I don't like running a lot of the Resident Evils because you can find Resident Evil runners everywhere. There's a lot of good Resident Evil runners, and a lot of the games that I play, you don't absolutely get to see all the time. Like, coming up soon tomorrow in store, I was actually going to be playing Parasite Eve because Parasite Eve is a Christmas game, and I love it. So we'll be doing that soon. Plus, it had a new route that was found, and I want to get a new PB with that. That's just one. We're going to be breaking all these harvesters. This is also why the motorcycle is nice, because this mission would suck without it. A lot. 
We're going to be utilizing the fact that we have the motorcycle and we're going to be breaking all of these harvesters. All right, good. It is much more efficient than trying to break these things normally, by the way. Breaking these things normally is terrible. RA6 is not that bad. I played it. It is not that bad. It is a mediocre game. I have actually played it this week, in fact. And I beat the whole game. All campaigns. It is okay. All right, let's go. It's really pawing my door, by the way. My door doesn't have scratches on it. One more to go. There we go. He's barking. You know what? You might be able to watch a cutscene because I don't want him to bark and wake up people in my house. Also, I'm going to hit a checkpoint there because I was going to remove the agents and they are not going to be hitting anything. I played alone, actually. I played solo for RE6, believe it or not. A lot of people told me it's better as a co-op game. I played it solo. I played RE6 solo. I didn't even play with a friend. He's not going to break down the door. He's a small dog. Anyway. It's dubstep. The music is dubstep. This game was made in 2011, and dubstep was popular around the time. Love it. I need that hole. What am I doing? It's really dated. I'll just say that. But yeah, I played RE6 alone. It's really not that bad. I don't know why people complain about it so much. I tweeted about it recently. So we're going to roll and slap. So phase one, I want the hammer to go down on the right. And as well, I'm going to be hitting it with the sledgehammer. I'm also going to dodge roll the way so I do not get hit. And this is a very simple fight. That's way of doing this is you just wait, you dodge roll, and then you go. Isn't it great? All right, phase one is now done. We're now going to phase two. Phase two turns from hammers to crabs. So now she has returned a progressed crab. I will now be using the vacuum cleaner I made because this is a lot of damage to crab form. Uh, I'll just be doing this. Wow, I might get a two-phase. Why did I talk? She's giving me the bad RNG. I'm getting very bad RNG now. Why did I speak up? There we go. All right, phase two is now done. Uh, also, now the dubstep is going away, and it's just going to be going to, uh... Orchestra. Now, the way this is going to work is we are going to be launching missiles at the, uh, the head here. And that's going to lower it down. I want to make sure it doesn't land on me, by the way. There's a rare chance I get knocked out of bounds, and it'll lose a lot of time. That's also QTEs, because this game was made in 2011. I need to hit three of these. We'll have two on the upside first. Also, I'm going to be dodging the fire. Play it safe. And while the other one's refreshing, we'll be good. Let's hope it doesn't miss. We might just so I can appease my dog. Y, B, Y, X. No, he won't want to leave the room. Nah, we're not going to watch it. All right, now we wait. We can actually wait right underneath her. Oh, you, I got rammed. Oh. Oh. Good 
activators and roll. Right, I can't believe BB died. Who would have guessed? If only somebody helped BB in her time of need. There we go. Alrighty. Roll. Oh, they just died from uh, exhaustion, essentially. Oh my god, am I gonna die? Hope not. I was left with one health left. Okay, hold on. Y, B, A, B. Okay, so the run's not done yet. This is the pseudo final boss. Bop. We still have a run coming. We still have a whole end game here coming up. Also, yeah, she's like a mercenary who's trying to kill people, so we have to get her. Alrighty, now we can continue the run. I level up, so my health's not going to be a problem. My dog is still pawing at my door. That was a good Stacy fight. We, we worked well. Also, let's see, is my game glitched or not? No, we're good. We can have wonky boarding. So, there's going to be a glitch coming up. It's called wonky boarding. What's going to happen is the skateboard can have a very unique property. Uh, I'll let it speak for itself if it happens. Let's see. I'll try to make it happen, but we'll see. Now that we're in overtime as well. Also, we don't have a good schedule after this is Sonal 2. Uh, we kind of had a last minute scheduling today, so. After this will be Silent Hill 2, also ran by me. That's a lot of me running games today, so we can kind of have that. Also, time my favorite part. Looks like he's having fun. There we go. So let's continue. Also, that's Frank West. That's the main character. All right. Am I going to get able to get wonky boarding? It's not letting me work. Hold on, maybe. No, it's not working. You can see my jumping is busted. Uh, if I can get a ramp up, I might be able to show you. Oh. Almost. Well, we'll see if we can get it. I can't really jump anymore. Hey, I'm glad you think so. Anyway, the whole point of this mission right now is we are in overtime. I'm glad you like Night Trap as well. I like Night Trap a lot. The only downside I have with Night Trap is that you can't really run it more than once. Or like, you can... Very often when I'm on stream, I like to grind games for hours. Uh, I can only really do Night Trap once per stream at most. You know? All right. So we got that, and now we're going to be getting more supplies. This whole section's going to be a gathering section. So, chat, you want to hear a funny joke? Why was six afraid of seven? Seven, eight, nine. What is this? <laughs> that right there. That's, the That's the stuff. That's what he's saying. See, he laughed. I only tell the best ones here. Also, so cool thing about this game is you can actually spam any phone calls. I have no idea if my boarding is wonky or not. What's that quote? Uh, you can see when I run the game on my stream. Frank West tells a horrible pun. That's what it is. There we go. Hey, uh, TK thought it was funny. Kick. There we go. I like TK's laugh. What can I say? It's infectious. There we go. You don't get it? That's all you have to get. That's all you gotta get right there. Just that laugh. You get that, you, you got it. Also, I guess I didn't get wonky boarding. Uh, anyway, I'll explain wonky boarding as a mechanic. What wonky boarding is, is it is a mechanic that only happens in overtime when you load into it. But the game can break for some reason, and you will end up flying really high. Uh, but it seems like I can't even jump at all anymore. Uh, normally, I get wonky boarding where it kind of sends me soaring, but I, I literally can't jump. Which is a neat form of it. Actually, it's kind of bad, because I can't jump over this railing. See, and I can't jump over the railing at all. I guess I have to take the escalator. Aww. Well, that's okay. I 
know if we can laugh. Although there is a way to fix wonky boarding and that is to just reload an area. Actually, let's do it right now. Never seen that? Neither have I. It is. It is Ace Case. It is Ictisis. That's correct. All right, my boarding is now fixed. And all that weird drop. The wonky boarding is fun to play around with. Like, you can get really high up. Like, you can literally fly. But I've never... Hey, that's never happened before. There it is for this game. We got it. I can't believe it. All right, and sweet, we are almost done with all of this. Uh, and this is just part of TK's fight. Uh, TK's fight is he just wants you to get a bunch of stuff. But how about we play around with some of the other TK dialogue, right? <laughs> CEO of Phenotrans. I was gonna say the TK voice actor had so much fun doing the line. I love him. Yep. Yeah, I need those to shut your bitch up. All right, let's go. All right, good. We're just gonna... Dawson, Darius, and Chavi drop. It's cursed. I played it. I want to speed run it. It's like RE4, but worse. Got something? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Just listen to that. Ooh. Yeah. It sounds like, like... Have you ever played Donkey Kong 64 and listen to Donkey Kong's sensual grunts? That's what TK sounds like. He, he channeled the same power, and I love that power. Hey, and thank you. The CEO. TK is the definitive best part of this game. I also mention that right now. I love everything about him. He is such a rude dude, and it's great. All right, we're going to be entering that boss fight in a moment, though. So, last thing needed is just the Zombrex right here. It's a very easy fetch quest. Also, if you get lost, the game does, like, have the arrow at the top. It does tell you where to go. Um, no, there is something to be noted. Weapons don't matter. Nothing I have will matter. Even though my board is breaking, I will not be needing it, because once we enter the TK fight, we'll be getting there. If you... If you've never heard Donkey Kong 64, listen to the way he does attacks. Like, actually listen to it. It's very just... I, the best way I can define it is sensual. I have sped around the evil thing, but I'll not be doing it today. Well, the Kool-Aid Man's... Oh, yeah. This is... Ooh, yeah. Alrighty, so we're almost done. So what's gonna happen is once I get to the TK fight, it's going to take away all my weapons, and we're gonna be surviving for three minutes. I might actually have PB'd this, by the way, by a wide margin. I don't want to retime this. I really don't want to retime this. I just plan a long cutscene so I don't have to worry about that, right? No, I was doing DK64 for that one. But Shadow is outside my room. Ooh, actually, hold on. All right, get in here. There we go. You happy now? By the way, yes, I uh, did take some time to let my dog into my room because he kept barking outside my door. He's a brat. All right, so this, we survived for like three minutes. Big sip. All right, now he waits. And we're just gonna keep using this. The chair is nice because the zombies will be able to hit me. So this is just a waiting portion. You have to wait and survive. Um, I think it's like three minutes or so, but I usually just use it based on the crescendo. I do not have a dog cam, unfortunately, so you cannot see him. 
Also, I eat hot dogs the same way Frank does. Also, I want to give a warning uh, to Tech. Um, the very ending of the game is going to have a very large audio ramp up. I don't know why. Uh, they play a song and it is so horribly tuned. Um, it just is super loud and there's no reason why it should be. Please, let me just get the beer. It's right there. Let my dog play the next part. No, he has a little bed I made for him, which is on the side of my slot machine. Okay, with the impressor ready, I will let you know. At the very least, like, part way, like, I'll start, and then you'll you'll know. You'll, you'll hear it, and you'll know. Pretty much it happens right after the final cutscene. Right down the middle, exactly. All right, almost done. So the final boss actually is a really neat strat too. Uh, the final boss is after this part. Clap. And also I can just use the grinders once again. Here's the impressor, perfect. Perfect. Are you scratching on the other side of the door now, Shadow? All right, so now is time for the boss fight. Slot machine? Yeah, I have a Silent Hill slot machine because I make dumb decisions. Oh, I AGDQ will be online. All right, so the way the fight's going to work is, like from earlier, I can actually cancel uh, the stun animation. As you can see there, I got stunned. Uh, however, if I go into the camera, I can cancel it. Also, healing Rebecca will bring TK back into the fight. So I'll just keep wailing on him and using Rebecca to lure TK back in. As I know he appreciates the violence of my baseball bat. All right, TK got away, so let's drink an orange juice and heal up. But yeah, AGDQ will be online. Also, TK is going to try to ram me. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm just going to avoid him. We're going to get the camera out, and this is the way the fight goes. Uh, he got away. That's fine. We roll and let's keep attacking so if it wasn't apparent i want to keep the fight near rebecca if i keep the fight right here i can get back fast enough this is actually going a little bit rough on the timing but outside the tk fight this has been a really good run all right so we're gonna roll let's run right here i like the tk And once again, Rebecca being healed will lure TK back into the fight. Oh no, I got rammed! He was, this is the overtime. All right, TK, time to eat my wood. TK's dead time. That's time. Now you, you. You must pay the dog tax. You know the rules as well as I do, my friend. You can heal Rebecca all the way, but it's not really worth it, because you don't need to. You must pay the dog to... Look at him! Look at you! Hey, you! So, have one more run, by the way. Let's watch the ending. That's pretty... I PP'd! Uh, that... Hey, Rebecca. How did I retime this? Three minutes under RTA. What do you say? By the way, yeah, I hope there's no jump scare followed by loud jazz during this cutscene. That's a PB. I think my PB is a 141. I'll check in a moment. Uh. All right, you can go back to your bed now. Oh no, the jump scare! Oh no, the loud jazz! <laughs> There's no winning with Dead Rising 2 off the record. That's dog name. His name is Shadow, and he is my he is my friend. Anyway, uh, apparently I may have PP during that. Uh, we'll check later.
But uh, for right now, I do want to say thank you for watching this one, Chad. This is a fun run for Dead Rising 2 off the record. I'm going to alt tab because the jazz is super, super loud. And uh, we do have one more run left for you tonight. Before we go to that, though, I do want to say that you have been enjoying the runs. If you haven't been enjoying uh, the runs I've done for you here, uh, you can check me out on Twitch. You can find me on that Twitch channel as well. You can find me on Twitter at Ictisis underscore Twitch. I post a lot, and I have a lot of general things. I also stream quite often. So if you're into that, you can definitely find it there. Really quick, just because it was asked, I will check. Uh, I may have PB'd. I think I did, actually. All right, so all bosses. Yeah, I had a 141.13 uh, as my time with loads. And I PB'd by about three minutes. So, I may have gotten top two, but I don't know. Uh, the only way to know is for me to retime it. But I may have gotten a really good PB. Uh, I've never had a 138, but that is wild. Anyway, I do hope that you have been enjoying the run so far. We're going to be back very quick with our last game. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Stand up, stretch, touch your toes. Be right back. All right, we are back with our last game of the night. Uh, this will be the last one. Also, to answer your question, first off, AGDQ will be in January of 2022. I think it's the 9th to the 16th. Now, you may be wondering, why is the screen green? What are we doing now? So the last game of the night I'll be running for you is Silent Hill 2 on hard mode. Uh, I do want to note that hard mode is going to be a little bit different than the base category. A lot of people run any percent. I think hard mode adds just a bit more interesting factors to the run. And I, I like difficulty. What can I say? Uh, that being said, uh, it's going to be a fun run. But time's going to start really quick because I actually need to manipulate the game's RNG. Uh, this is a trick that we do now, and it makes the game much better for what's coming forward. Anyway, I'm going to now boot up the game. And while doing so, I will also be setting my core to be running in single core. Because this game has a separate issue where if you don't put it in single core, it will actually break. Also, all right, time starts now. I barely got that, but now that we're in the game, uh, we're going to be able to kind of talk about what's all happening. Silent Hill is a bit of a weird game because this is a game with a lot of ramp up. Uh, the general idea is it immediately starts with like three different tricks and i'll break down all of them for one the rmg manipulation will come in handy later i have a big chart of numbers that i keep with me at all times and we use this chart to decide what rmg seat am i on uh, as well you may notice there's going to be a game saved at the bottom left uh, that is going to break the game in a variety of ways the first one being i can hold text up and kind of go through barricades i shouldn't be able to go through as well, more importantly, game saved. Um, that's going to be up the whole run because it increases my stamina to 100%. And yeah, um, RNG manipulation was discovered by a guy named San Hill Tulak. He actually came into my personal stream, uh, terrified me, and because of that happening where he uh, absolutely terrified me with that, I was able to uh, shed some light on that with people. We found out how RNG manipulation works. Also, there's a fun trick there where you can mash it, and if you mash it, you can uh, skip a very minor little thing. Also, yes, if anyone who knows Silent Hill 2 Punchy's Run at AGDQ of 2019, I still have the game saved sign. They let me keep it, nobody else wanted it. So it is now mine, and it rests on my door even today. I'm a big fan of this franchise and a big fan of this game. I actually did end up running this game at AGDQ, uh, back in 2018, which uh, I think helped revive the runs of this game just a wee bit. So, it's all neat in how all that works. Anyway, um, hard mode's one of the lesser ran categories, just because there is a bit of the difficulty ramp up. Uh, for most runners, any percent's kind of the jam, because, you know, it's mostly routing, anyone can learn it, it's quite nice and pretty easy. So, with that, um, you know, it's easy to get into and it's nice. I know I said that, but still. With hard mode, you have to kind of take more into account the actual combat of the game, the ammo management, and stuff like that. And, you know, while it is a bit more of a tougher category, I do love showcasing it, and it's fun to watch, I think. Very often, I like to play categories I think I would like to watch. So that's kind of the jam. 
anyway, I'm going to talk to that fence. By talking to that fence, we now have this text up that says there's no reason to go back. I'm going to look for Mary. The text is actually just going to be a way for me to break the game. By having that text up, the game would normally pause. Um, since I able to keep it held up with the game saved, it's going to pause the game kind of indefinitely. Now, the better question, what does this do? What this does is this is going to allow me to freeze all of the game's elements, including things like items spawning in, uh, assets spawning in, enemies spawning in, and uh, cutscene triggers spawning in. There's going to be a cutscene in this game that normally will drag you away to get the first weapon in the game, which is a plank of wood. However, I'm going to be able to run right past that. And the map is huge, there's a lot to going on in this map. Also, before anyone asks, I am playing this on the PC version. Uh, there are console versions that do not use these glitches, however, the PC version is quite broken for this reason. Uh, the reason why it is broken isn't due to anything of like bad development, it's because PC gamers like a quick save function, so they kind of quickly added one and they didn't really test the ramifications of this. This isn't bad, this is the fact that they had to input something that they had no idea how it would affect the rest of the game. So that is why this works. Alright, so now that I've ran past the cutscene trigger, which is the blood on the ground, I'm going to be in this hole. I'm going to be in this alleyway. Um, you'll see a black square on the left. It's actually a car. I have now spawned everything back in, including items. I have to do this because the first item of our quote-unquote dungeon will be coming up right here. It's kind of funny because a lot of the games like the Silent Hill series are you run through the street, you go to like a building or a dungeon, so to speak, and then you do the puzzles and then you go to the next one. So I, I kind of call them dungeons because of the Legend of Zelda and all that, which is kind of weird, but eh, it's fitting. People tend to get it. Also, I do uh, say if uh, there's anyone who does not like this game for any reason, uh, playing past the apartments, the game does get a lot better. I do know a lot of people complain about the apartment specifically. The game really ramps up once you get to the hospital. It's really good. And it's a beautiful game in general. Uh, the first few minutes of the run, though, are definitely just kind of jogging through the nice town. It's a nice little romp through the city. Uh, but trust me, we'll be getting a lot of resources coming up. And we actually have some unique traits to hard mode. Uh, a lot of you may have recently seen uh, the Rixer made a video of explaining the Silent Hill any% percent speedrun for Silent Hill 2. However, hard mode has some differences that you may not be aware of. Uh, one of the primary differences is, like Super Smash Bros. Brawl, tripping exists in this game. Uh, tripping happens on hard mode and only hard mode. The whole idea is it kind of makes it more like Silent Hill 1. So, a good example of tripping is if you're running here and you try to mash, Jane, oh, I didn't get there. I'll try to trip just to showcase it. A lot of people don't like the apartments because it's kind of uh, confusing. I'll see if I can get the trip. I should be able to. Let's see. I think I'll get on the next one. Not this one, but the following one. Alright, also now we have a flashlight. The flashlight is going to help us with a lot of the stuff coming up. Also, let's see. There it is. So, normally you'll be tripping anytime you uh, do a dead stop like that and try to talk to doors. However, by mashing game saved, I actually remove the function of tripping. I have no idea why it does that, but it's kind of funny that you can just remove tripping from the game. Also, now I have a gun. I quickly swap my inventory to said gun, because that's going to allow me to skip a few things. In addition to that, I do need to cause a cutscene trigger to start, which is going to be that key. All right, now all that being done, we're going to do a minor skip using the game save function once again. There's going to be a cutscene trigger here, but I'll end it immediately. Uh, since I end it immediately, I can just run forward, and we're going to be able to go to the room sooner than later. However, the game is actually kind of busted, so I have to aim, I'll bring the game back in action, and then we're good. Also, it's not an autosave. Every few, like, you know, every second or so, I am pushing the game save button. I'm mashing square on my controller. Um, this is just kind of a thing. Also, it's not like a mash that will break your hands mash. It's like a one, two, three, four, like it, you're just kind of tapping on the button. And every, you have to make sure it stays up. And you can do that by pushing like every like two seconds or something. So it's not too bad there. All right, now it is time to see if we got good RNG or bad RNG. Uh, the way RNG is going to work is it's all based on the intro clock. Uh, the clock is still going to be randomized, but so once I know one answer to the puzzle, I will know everything. And once I know everything, we're cooking. So, once I get to the clock, I will see a time. 
which let's see what we get. We will have a... That looks like a 10.06. So I have a 10.06. Oh. I am on seed 28. I now am aware of this and I have foreseen everything. I will be getting a number codes 3316 later, 1778. I will be having to move the big head south and down, so, you know, like side and down. I will have the second arsonist and the number on the briefcase will be null. Uh, I will not be wrong on this. I am absolutely certain that is what I have. I have checked every single result possible and that will be all the RNG of the game. As well, you may have noticed something. I'm actually grabbing ammo. On hard mode, you need a lot of ammo. You need four ammo pickups for a total of 45 shots, I believe. So, I need a lot of bullets. You start off with a base 10, and you, we grab four pickups. And if I'm right, RNG manipulation will happen. But if an RNG manipulation originally happened, there's a big down, like, decrease in amount of runners in the total game. But I loved it. It was great. I'll, I will save my... I even have the sign on my wall saying game saved. Also, for anyone who is wondering what happened, uh, Shadow is currently sleeping in his bed. So, he's doing... He's doing good. Now, I should be on seed 28. Um, yeah, pretty much, you can just write down the first 50 seeds and then you'll be good to go. That, that's how easy it is for the most part. And now we're going to be going back to get some coins. Uh, the major gate of the apartments is going to be three coins. I'm going to need three of them. The snake, the prisoner, and like an old man, I think. They really don't matter what they are. What matters, though, is that I need them. So the first coin is going to be got by going upstairs and using the juice we got to actually solve a puzzle, which is just going to be dropping juice down a chute. A very clever puzzle indeed. And that's going to give me the key. This is more like getting the key to the puzzle and then you do the puzzle later. Also, there is a nice glitch you can do here. Uh, by mashing the button once you grab the item, uh, you can start saving and confirming. And by doing that, you can actually run around and get directly to the door. Uh, load speed may vary and the time you do might vary as well, but it's pretty cool. And thank you. I hope that I hope that you all have been enjoying the runs tonight so far. I do try to do a lot of different horror games. I do like doing a lot of things. So I do hope that you have been having a great time. And once again, I will just take a moment to plug myself since we're pretty early into the first, I don't know, fifth of this run or so. First fifth or uh, tenth. But if you have been enjoying uh, me as a runner, you can check me out on Twitch. I do a lot of runs and a lot of games. All right, I figured this out. Which part? And a lot of it's community efforts. The RNG, it was found out because a guy named Sonal 2 luck came into my stream and he pretty much figured out the whole thing. He was apparently going into more than one Silent Hill stream at that time, but apparently I was the one who actually kind of informed people, hey, what do I do if someone's feeding me the answers? Because it is a question. After that, it was worked out by the community on how it all worked. I were able to find a very easy way of manipulating the RNG without having to worry about much, which is the way I've been doing it. All right, so now that I got the coins, I talked to Eddie, we're going to be able to go to the second half of the apartments. Funny enough, casually, you think the apartments are like one of the longest levels ever, but it's actually not super long. You can get through here pretty quickly. Like, the amount of rooms you tend to go in are very... It's very small. And a bit surprising. Also, since we are uh, doing a marathon run of this, I will be playing it much safer than I normally do because this game can be quite mean if you're not careful. Also, we continue to grab ammo, because I do need that ammo, and we'll be getting our last coin right now, which is right there. So, and I have all the bullets, I have all the stuff, and we're going to be having the coin puzzle. Now, the way I do this is, uh, I remember Gold 5, like League of Legends ranks. I pause the game each time afterward as well, because it will let me go to the menu faster. I remember Silver 2, also like my League of Legends rank. And then Snake 4. Uh, these puzzles are actually different depending on what you play. So if you're on normal mode, the puzzle will be different. So keep that in mind. Also, I'll be grabbing this health kit. 
You don't need this one, but I like having it. It's pretty fast to get and it's pretty reliable. Yeah, I do a lot of games. I have over 100 games and all of them are horror or horror adjacent. Also known as the Hank Hill, the horror and horror accessories. Some games are the accessories, some games are the horror. That's how it works out. And our last round of bullets. So we're gonna be hitting the hard mode pyramid head fight. How many games do I speed run? Over 100. I do it quite a lot. All right, pyramid head fight. How's this gonna go? Well, I'm going to shoot him in the face repeatedly. By walking into him, this was found that you can pretty much get rid of all the actual aggro. Um, I think this is found just by, because I, actually, I don't know, I think I routed this. But this was found because on any percent, runners would normally walk into him and that would stop him. But I realized while doing uh, another category that walking into him and firing all the bullets would actually be much safer because you just won't uh, attack him. I've not ran him scared, no. Anyway, I need 45 bullets. Five more how to do it. And that's an easy fight. So doing that's double benefit. One, I'll never be attacked. Two, uh, I will get all my attacks in. If you hide in the corner, you won't be able to get every attack in. That is the dilemma. So it is absolutely imperative that you do that. And then you just wait for him. Well, hey, there you go. Yeah, I tend to keep the rotation in the games quite a lot. And correct. I played League first. That is, uh, that is correct. I have been playing League since Season 2. Although, I'm actually like Diamond. I like to make, like, making the joke of my own self-deprecation. It is a cool category, mainly because you get to do a lot of the fights. And there's some unique strats. I like playing games. I think they're fun. It's kind of why I guess Twitch streaming worked quite nicely. Uh, I was able to kind of do something I enjoy. Yes, so beating Pyramid Head, there are two ways. One, you do enough damage to where he'll run away. Uh, two, you just kind of outlast him. Uh, it's faster to go that way. Also, wait a minute, James, what happened? There he is. You can break a lot of things in the game by saving. I want to run Tormented Souls, but I've not done so yet. But in due time, I will. Uh, the next game I plan on learning is an indie title named Eliza. Uh, it's based on Alice in Wonderland. It's kind of like a Resident Evil game. I've actually really been enjoying it, so it seems fun. No, no, we're just doing hard mode. Basic hard mode today. Game is fun. I can't believe it, right? I can't believe it. Oh, there's actually a lot of weird games I want to learn at one point or another. I just like playing games. What could I say? Uh, a lot of it kind of feeds into my own streaming habits. Which, all my streaming habits tend to be, if I like a game, I will run it. If I don't like a game, I don't run it. And I want to reiterate this, because I said this earlier as well. When a lot of speedrunners get into speedrunning, what will tend to happen is they will say, what game do I run? Thinking there's an answer. There's not an answer. The answer is your favorite. And thank you, Lana Little Snack. Uh, I am a dork who likes to talk a lot. Uh, that is where a lot of it comes from. <laughs> so it's nice. James does have the hip sway. He, uh, he's a very mobile man. My thoughts on the movies? I don't think about them. Alrighty, so we're going to continue. We've, we've gone through that. We've done all the uh, event triggers that need to happen there. We're now going to be going to the hospital. The hospital is where the game is really going to start amping up. Uh, the reason why is because we're going to be having, one, the RNG kind of coming into full factor. Two, uh, the hard mode uh, damage is really going to be coming into effect. And three, we're going to be having one of the tougher fights of the game. I don't think I would say it's the hardest fight in the game, but it's definitely not, like, it's hard. It's not the hardest. It's definitely challenging, though. Like, I feel like I've lost more runs to this fight than some of the harder fights, and it's weird. You're not wrong, Litekli. You're not wrong. Yeah, realistically, speedrunning, like, uh, especially after GDQs, because I know HGDQ is coming up, 
a lot of great runners, a lot of fun times, but I know a lot of people tend to get into speedrunning after a GDQ. If you've been interested in it all in Mercurius, go ahead and give it a shot. In all honesty, it's just playing a game fast. You don't need to compete with a global leaderboard in order to speedrun. You can quite literally do whatever you want. Why am I spamming the save button? It makes me faster because it regenerates my stamina to 100% each time. It also prevents tripping, so I need to make sure I do that. On hard mode, at least. Also, my name is Ek Dices. Like Ek Dices, like dice and Ek. I speedrun games as an avenue to replay games I like. Anyway, cool trick. You can do a little loop-to-loop -loop and you won't get slapped. I came up with that one. I also grab a needle and a shotgun in this room. It's also for the stamina. It's a two-pronged reason. All right, so we get the ammo. We're gonna be getting the key, and that'll be good. No, this game does have tricks and a decent amount of them. It's a lot of saving, though, as you can imagine. Also, I do want to mention that the nurses are pretty heavy. They do hit hard, so you have to make sure you avoid them. Also, this puzzle answer will always be the same. It is a T. No, this is our dead wife. The story of this game is amazing if you've never played it. I recommend playing it. It's an amazing game, an amazing story. If you know nothing about the story, play it. Yeah, my name is pronounced Ekdysis, though. That is how I pronounce it. Or Ekdysis. But Ekdysis works like that. I like the shotgun. I think it's fun. Also, I'm going to check over here. I'm going to check over here. Damage doesn't matter what you took, because now I have this. Anyway, uh, 33, 16, and 1778. I'm now going to heal. We'll be moving forward. Once we're triggering this game, the out-of-bounds, which we'll be getting to later, and you will see that when it comes. Uh, I end up taking a lot of health kits, because, again, I don't want to die to these nurses. I, I got horrible RNG on the nurses, so good thing I healed. Okay, so what did I say they were? I said they were 3316 and 1778. And there's one. And what was that? 3316. All right, I have now done this. Man looks for wife. That's the story. You're not getting anything else. If you want to watch the story, play the game. It's a beautiful game. Don't spoil yourself. You don't get spoilers in this run, really, unless it's outside of the story beats, but yeah. Changes the fastest, it doesn't really matter because you're it just changes the final boss slightly. But the premise of this game is man looks for dead wife. And that's not spoiling anything, that is the opening sentiment. Alrighty. Yeah, a lot of the stuff in this game sounds like a Portishead album. So if you like Portishead or general 90s trip hop, boy, do I have a game for you. Also, I run a lot of the Silent Hill games. I do Silent Hill 4, 1, 2, 3. I pretty much ran all of them at one point or another. So, you like any Silent Hill content, I do all I do all of it. And I'm pretty good at all the games as well. Anyway, the way this fight's gonna work is I'm gonna be going the side. I need to pump five to six shots on both of these dudes. Uh, phase one is pretty good. And I'm actually gonna be going to my inventory to reload my gun, because that's gonna prevent me from getting hit. Uh, now, I'm gonna keep firing on this one and we should be good here. Uh, this fight's probably one of my favorite in the whole game, uh, but it'll take some time. Uh, you know they're done when their feet curl up like so. On this one, I'll reload manually so I don't have the menu, because uh, I have a bit of a weight on this one, and they come out right here. From here, we're going to be firing a little bit more, and that's going to be good. Now, a cool thing about this game, and yes, this game does have a dog ending. A cool thing about this game is that counterattacks do more damage than regular attacks. So, if you attack while someone else is attacking, you will do more damage. Uh, and that's the case right there. You can see they died. Just like that. So it is something to keep in mind. Also, my favorite pizza topping is cheese. Does that count? I count it. If someone says they want a pizza without cheese, then you call them a liar. They're lying to you. All right, so now we're in the other world of the hospital. We grab another medkit because we'll be safe and we're able to kind of just, you know, cut some corners here.
No, you're thinking of plank only. We're not doing plank only today. Eh, not really. Four is its own jam, I think, for the most part. Although I want to run more four. I was actually thinking of running solo four this week, maybe. Or next week, maybe. My dog is making dog noises. Oh, he's okay. Okay. He's doing his best. There we go. We are now able to go back up. So the whole thing here is we need to get two rings. The rings are pretty easy to get. They're always in the same spots. And the main thing is you just have to kind of avoid the nurses. You don't want to take too many hits right now. Although, if you mean actual toppings and not me complaining, I don't know. I guess vegetables. I mean, it, all right. My favorite pizza as of lately has been bell pepper mushroom olive, which some people might not like that, but I actually like veggie pizzas a lot. I also recently had a Brussels sprout pizza. I also had broccoli Brussels sprout and mushroom pizza as well. I like margarita pizzas. I like a lot of veggie pizzas. I eat veggie pizzas. That's the main jam. What's our scan ever sped ran? Amnesia. By far. That game is hard. Okay. So, time for another unique hard mode glitch. What's going to happen is, like I mentioned, certain things in this category are a wee bit different. Uh, one of the most important ones is Pyramid Head's boss fight right here will kill Maria if I leave Pyramid Head with Maria. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the game with a unique glitch. I'm going to mash the game save button and the map button. Uh, I need to make sure I can break the game and accidentally save. Nope. Third try of the charm. Now it says Gant saved. Uh, with the Gantt saved at the bottom, combined with uh, all that, um, Pyramid Head will never spawn for this fight. I'm able, to, I'm able to run through the whole hallway with Maria by my side. And we'll be good. Also, you have to be subbed me to sub. You can't say unsubbed. Anyway, the coolest part is this breaks the game in the cutscene, so watch. Oh no, Margarita's like basil, tomato, and like cheese. Oh no, save anywhere. <gasps> Hey, what was her name again? I didn't remember. What was her name? That's right, it's Parking Lot. So it breaks the subtitles because it doesn't really know what to put there, so it just puts save locations. So Maria's new name is now Parking Lot because of that. Gantt save. Name undecided. It was inside at the end. It was parking lot. Alrighty. So now comes the last, I would say, really slow part of the run. Like, it's not a bad section, but it's definitely not my favorite. Uh, the main reason why is just because this portion is going to be uh, running through the dark town. Uh, we do have some neat stuff coming up, but a lot of it's going to be running in the dark. I will, however, try to keep my flashlight on as much as possible, because I do understand that very often you won't quite be able to see what's going on if I don't do that. Ah, yes, only Maria's real friends can call her parking lot. That's that's the rule. What is my time record in this game? I want to say I have a 45-10, and currently I am fourth place out of seven people. I'm um, exact in the middle of the leaderboard for this category. Um, the major issue with this category is the final boss. Uh, no matter how good your run might be, the final boss really is the thing that kind of decides if you get a PB or not. And you'll know when we get there. That's all I could really say. I've had a few attempts that were close to me getting like a minute ahead, but... I could just never get the final boss down right. As well, I do need to run in the dark here because the little guys will be poking my feet and I don't want them to poke my feet because that's not good. That would be bad. 
As you can see, we pass two, and then after the second one, we can turn back on the light. Now, fun fact. Fun fact. I need to do this glitch once again. We'll be running in the dark for a little bit here. Now, the reason why we're running in the dark is earlier in the game, I used text to skip the blood cutscene that takes me over to the wooden plank. It's still in the game. I never interacted with it, so it still exists. Cutscenes don't go away because we skipped them. They only go away if we interact with them. I mean, you can skip them after watching them, but the thing is, it hasn't gone away yet, and it would force me to go down a certain route. So, while in the dark, I also need to do the glitch once again so I don't break the game, because I can accidentally break the game if I'm not careful. So while I'm in range of the blood spot, I need to uh, have the glitch up and be running. Once the camera changes, I'm able to drop it, go up here, and we'll then be doing it again uh, once we head back. You have to do it twice, once on the way there, once on the way back. Uh, I usually like to wait a little bit after the camera change, so. Uh, at this point, we're probably good, but I just wanna play it safe. And good, back in business. So I got the wrench, and that is one of the neat tricks you can do. Um, as a whole, what this strategy does is it saves like a minute and a half. So it's definitely worth doing. It is absolutely necessary. Well, I already broke the game once, so that became the new state. You can break the broken. Break it twice, that's how it goes. All right, now we're simply running through the rest of the area. Now, the worst part of this portion is uh, we are going to have to get a key, and you can forget the key. Uh, in fact, it happens sometimes. Uh, if it happens during a run, may God help your soul. How badly would it break? I'd have to reload the game to fix it. So it would invalidate the run in terms of a submission leaderboard. However, if you're just trying to do a showcase, it's not the end of the world. Well, yeah, I mean, the whole thing, though, is, like, they, they weren't expecting uh, people to be trying to quick save all the time. Most people aren't trying to mash the game save button, like, 2,000 times in a single run. Uh, most people would probably just try to save it every now and again or if they felt nervous. So it's kind of funny that with that, it led to breaking the game. We also do have a quick load. Quick loading will be allowed for one portion of this run, though. Uh, believe it or not. While we're not allowed to normally quick load, we are allowed to quick load for exactly one portion. Also, there's the wrench. However, it is not enough to use the wrench. You must get the key. Alright, good. And now we can head to the end of the area. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, if you end up missing, I, a lot of you'll miss this, and the walk of shame is the saddest thing, because you'll be walking from this park all the way down. It's like maybe, I don't know, four minutes of time loss. And four minutes is steep. It is super steep. On a long section, just making it so much worse ought to suck. But don't do it. Oh. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do after this run, though, chat? I am going to go get food. I'm hungry. I've been doing GDQ runs for, like... Long. I have an estimation of time, but I don't quite know what it is. But 108 plus 138 plus probably 105. Over that math checks out too. Someone could do it. I plus 29. So I did night trip. I did four runs today. Although I did a marathon of games yesterday, so I guess not so bad. At this point, I was really talking out loud instead of doing uh, much else because we're just running through a town. Anyway, fun fact about these long stairs. These are just long stairs. You might wonder, uh, how do these work? Am I from Texas? No, I am from the world. I'd rather not dox myself. But they just made a very long set of stairs. This isn't like looped. This isn't anything else. It's just super long stairs. I mean, it's a practical solution. I'll do it. 
but it's definitely neat to see. Almost the bottom. And there it is. So we will be grabbing the health right here. Uh, it's a good safety resource. And as well, you notice mid-run, I picked up a pipe. Why did I pick up that pipe? Well, I will be soft-locked in the well if I did not grab this pipe. Um, since we never got the plank of wood, you wouldn't be able to actually do this. Normally, the way it's not soft-locked is you're forced to get a melee weapon in the beginning of the game, and you can use that. However, we never got it, so we need to get another weapon that is much faster to get. Oh no, Mario did long stairs worse, because these ones actually do have an ending. This is the cooler move. Alright, anyway, what I do is I save and I load there. That is the only time that is permitted, and you are allowed to duplicate an item this way. It is a very simple trick, and we are then able to just jump down the chute, and we are on the next area. Uh, this section uh, is going to be devoted to getting three of these tablets. The main thing here is just don't get hit. There's going to be a lot of enemies kind of going through the prison as I'm here. I want to make sure that they're not going to hit me. And good, there's our first. And like I mentioned, I want to be quite fast because they can body block me. They can do a lot to mess up my stuff. How much did you miss? Uh, at least about four hours of spooky speed running. But that's okay. There's always VODs on YouTube. And we do speedruns from the crypt every, I don't know, two weeks. So it really all depends. All right, so we've gotten all the tablets and now we can use it to do something else. This is one of those areas in the game that's kind of like the old school, like, oh, you got three tablets? Here's a pint of glue. What do I do with a pint of glue? Oh, you feed it to the rabbit. It's like, like random logic that's like, oh, okay, I get it. So we're gonna use three tablets and all this does is this is going to give me a, I think it's like a handcuff. Or no, it gives me a horseshoe. Also, I'm able to save during that. Also, if you heard that scream, that was me after Thanksgiving dinner. I just died. <laughs> we got the horseshoe. I have been eating nothing but Thanksgiving leftovers for the past, like, four days or something. I don't, I don't hate them, but God, I've uh, been eating a lot of turkey. All right, so now that we got everything, we have a lighter, we have a horseshoe, and we have a candle. What does that make? That's right, a door knob. Two hours in? I'm more like, uh, three and a half, I think. The wrong way. That's the door. There's also night trap and saw. Which does make sense. Alright, so now we're in an elevator. Uh, the elevator is a waiting portion. We can chill in here. Oh, if you die and need to reload, it makes Thanksgiving dinner invalid. Of course it does. How's turkey taste? Sleepy. Like sleepy chicken. Anyway, this is the time of the run. I like to check my phone on Twitter. Because all I do is wait. Hey, I got over 3,200 followers. Thank you, anyone who followed me. It is appreciated. Also, if you haven't... If you if you haven't checked me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash I've plugged myself like five times at least throughout the past few hours. But that's what we do while you're waiting. Shameless plugs. That's what happens, right? It's the real horrors of Silent Hill. Anyway, time for the more fun fact. I get my pistol out. By getting my pistol out as well, I'm going to be memorizing the RNG needed. It's going to be side and down. There's going to be, and it is going to be second arsonist. So, check this out. Before we check this out, though, I, for I forgot to mention. Hard mode has unique routing once again. Oh, the screams just say you solved the puzzle. That's it. 
But we're gonna be getting the great knife. Not the okay knife, not the great wife, but the great knife. Uh, the great knife is an incredibly powerful weapon. Uh, it is going to be used in this. It's also not New Game Plus. You can find the great knife here at all points. A lot of people are surprised that there's a great knife in this game. You can find it. And you can also modify it into the game and walk with it for four hours, and it takes a long time. I have done that. I don't make good decisions. But it's funny. Alrighty. So, side down. This is actually an RNG puzzle only on hard mode. However, you can manipulate the RNG so it's no longer an RNG puzzle. Now it's actually faster than the regular puzzle, funny enough. Um, it's actually been kind of discussed, and I think there's some merits to it, but I think hard mode riddle difficulty might be faster than uh, any percent. A lot of runners have been doing normal when I think if they do hard, they might actually save some time. So. Also, you can't use the great knife for this. You have to use the wire cutter for some reason. That's it going. And we are going to the labyrinth. So there's no RNG here. It's always the same path. Um, usually if you go right, you're fine. Great knife percent at GDQ win. I do not think GDQ would take the great knife percent. It is four hours of moving around great knife. Anyway, six shots into the sky's abdomen, and it should at least get me here. Uh, there's a few things that can happen that was okay. And now we are approaching the end of the labyrinth, actually. We're making pretty good time. And we'll be doing a massive boss fight skip. Uh, normally, if you played Zonal 2, there's a boss fight in this game that is absurdly creepy, and its name is Abstract Daddy. Abstract Daddy is absolutely terrifying, and it's a hard fight. So we're not gonna do it. Instead, what I will be doing is I will break the game by using the game save function once again. So I'm gonna go through this room and I'm gonna be matching the map and game saved. By having the text up, this prevents the boss from spawning in, meaning I can just pass it. There, boss fight is nice and easy. Now, we're gonna be hitting the blind arsonist puzzle. And hard mode is actually the counterfeit, so it's the blind counterfeit. It's this one right here, the second one. It goes on a number grid, one, two, three, four, five, and it goes in kind of like a horseshoe. So one, two, three in that one, and then it kind of goes around until it loops back to six. Uh, I already knew the answer. That was a one in six guess. I didn't guess. I manipulated all the RNG. It's all nine. Anyone can do it. It's very fun. If you want to save free time save in a Silent Hill 2 run and you run this game, do RNG manip. It is actually free. I know people like to say, oh, bank trick is free. No, this is actually free. You literally just memorize numbers. You have a notepad of numbers for booting up the game weirdly. That's all you have to do. There's nothing else needed. It's not a trick. It's literally just you start the game up in the right way, and then you're good. Okay, but now is time for an awkward fight. I like this fight, but it's a bit awkward. Uh, getting this fight situated took a while, but this is going to be the Eddie fight. Uh, Eddie is definitely a tough hitter. Uh, he is a mean, mean dude. Uh, as well, play it safe, we'll be taking the ampule. That's a fair sound. Hell enemy? Good question. I don't know. My wife. That's the one. My, my wife. Okay, so this fight's going to work is I'm going to be grabbing the great knife. And once I enter this room, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be preparing the weapon and I will bonk him on the skull. That is the plan here. Eddie, what are you doing? So he should be good. He'll either punch me or he will try to attack me. We'll see. So, he went around like that, that's good, I wait, I'm going to bonk him on the skull. And then I'll be swapping over to the shotgun. Alright, so that's phase one of Eddie nice and done. I actually go over to keyboard for this. Phase two will be nice and easy as well. So, I'm going to walk into this meat and Eddie's going to start beating his meat. Now, I'm going to slash him. Well, that was easy, I slightly messed it up. Let's play this nice and safe though. 
wrong way because I am dummy. Hold on, this is a bit awkward. So normally you want to get Eddie stuck on the meat. Like so. And Eddie's dead. So it took me a bit there, but we got it. Uh, using the great knife on Eddie does an immense amount of damage, but having him punch the meat will be much better. Now, fun fact, a lot of people mentioned the boat's hard. Let me show you how to do the boat. Uh, on PC, it's super easy. Go over to keyboard. I hold W and D until I see the light. And when I see the light, I only hold W. There we go. I did the whole boat. I hold forward now. People tend... Uh, the reason why people mess up the boat is they forget it's a boat. It doesn't turn on a dime, and it doesn't start going forward. You start going left because it's a boat. You have to turn to go forward, and then you go forward. Also, that scream was also me after Thanksgiving. Really, you take a single scream from this game, and that was me after Thanksgiving. I was filled with turkey, man. One might even say I was stuffed. Uh, the weapon switches is because if Eddie's running, I want shotgun. If Eddie is close, I want great knife. Fun fact, by the way, do not get the great knife out while you're on the boat. If you get the great knife out while you're on the boat, you will actually be slower. Uh, the boat's movement speed is based on James's movement speed. Meaning, yes, if you do great knife only as a category, uh, the boat is also slow, and it's hilarious. He decided instead of using the oars, he'll use great knives instead. And it didn't work. Okay, so now it is time for the largest break in the game, I would argue, and probably one of the more intimidating parts of the run. But don't you worry, not a lot of you will see this, and I will teach you the way. Uh, in fact, it's kind of one of those cases where I think a lot of runners, uh, a lot of people who learn a game, will only watch the top runner, and then they realize, oh, wait a minute, there's this super easy strat that I'm not doing. Wait, what? So check this out. I'm going to be getting game saved and going to my keyboard. From then, I'm going to be going up and slightly right. I'm going to be walking and kind of moving until James gets roughly in, uh, let's say, where his little feet are out. Once his little feet are out, I'll be tapping left and I'll be tapping up. By doing that, James will always fall into position. That is 100% consistent and it's super easy. From here, I will get the camera right here and I'm now going to be holding W on my keyboard. This will keep James going forward. Uh, there's going to be one loading screen. Ignore that one. When I see the second door... I'm then going to be holding A and S. And we're tapping A to kind of be in line right here. You can kind of see it moving, wobbling. That's what you want, and that's how you do the out-of-bounds. What most top runners will actually do is something slightly different that saves maybe a second at max. Because the setup time is still roughly the same. Uh, that is a very easy and very consistent strat, but nobody knows about it for some reason. So, you get to hear about it. Also, this is the moral of the story. Whenever you learn a game, watch like the top three runners. You don't only have to watch world record if you really want to try to like learn everything. But that out of bounds saves a portion where I have to give up all my weapons, which, you know, that would take a lot of time. So we don't want to do that. I'd have to get them all back as well. Alright, so now we're gonna get this key, we'll be able to leave. I also grab a health kit for safety. This will be the last run of the night. We had a lot of runs tonight though, but if you would like to see more, although I think you already I think you're already a part of the channel. But just because it's another excuse for a shameless plug, you can check me out on twitch.tv slash ictisis or on any other platform as ictisis. Except Twitter, which is ictisis underscore twitch. Good question. A lot of the tech was figured out by the time I already got in this game. However, that particular setup was found by me. Uh, the other trick, though, I don't know who found it. I think it was a runner by the name of Big Man Japan. No, ideally, you don't want to be murdering most of the enemies because you can easily pass by them. Um, there's not really much of a point. There we go. Yes, there's a massive routing difference on hard mode at any percent. Uh, hard mode is very specific. I did make a video on my own YouTube kind of explaining more of this. Also, this kind of does a nice coverage of the topic. 
but that is the case. Oh, hey, perfect. Perfect. But for hard mode, I definitely kind of geek out about it a lot. What I do after this game? I'm going to get food. I'm going to pet my dog. Anyway, the answer to this is going to be null. Because RNG minute from earlier is still in effect. And the answer is null. What do you look at that? I'm a prophet. No, I'm just reading from notes. If the mods would like to plug me, they can. They're allowed to. Well, actually, I am a graveyard shift worker in all fairness. Today is kind of like a half day from what I would normally do. Uh, normally, I do stream about eight hours on my own personal channel. Yeah, I like my long hair. I decided to let it rock down because of anime. I mentioned that earlier, but I'll mention it again because some people here maybe not hear from earlier. Also, do not forget this key. I've done that way too much, and I am dumb for doing that. Alrighty, now it is time for the big twist of the game. What's the big twist? It's absolutely terrifying. It is a horror game after all. You might need to cover your eyes, chat. No, I fed my dog before stream started. My dog's eating. I haven't eaten. The big twist is that VHS exists. Ah, the horror. It's a blockbuster. Ooh. Next, I'll tell you about DVDs. I can't believe it. All right, we're absolutely in the end game right now. We're doing pretty good. In fact, my 110 estimate was kind of assuming I'd mess it up. Hey, there we go. There's a plug. Perfect. Thank you. All righty, so the final boss fights are going to be rough, and we have some very interesting strats to deal with them. I know I've said that a lot, but trust me, these ones are going to blow your mind. So... The first final boss fight will be the Dual Pyramid Head. The Dual Pyramid Head is very difficult. They hit like a truck. However, I was the first runner and I invented the strat to beat the Dual Pyramid Heads with a plank of wood. I actually made plank only on hard mode a viable category. It had never been done by anyone before that. And that is my grand achievement. I can't believe it. I decided to beat the Pyramid Heads on hard mode with a plank of wood. So, for this category though, we're not gonna be using a plank of wood, but we'll be using the Great Knife. Uh, we'll be doing a very neat strat that I wanna say was found by UFO Techie. So, what's gonna happen is right now, I'm gonna be going into this corner, I'll be getting out the Great Knife, I'll be turning around, and I'm gonna pause the game. I am actually going to be rolling up my sleeves, and we're gonna be going back to the 90s, baby. We're gonna be going to tank controls. Right now, I've been on directional. Directional is faster. We're going to rotational. I'll put it in tank. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to look at the right pyramid head. There are two of them. I'm now going to start swinging at this wall. What's going to happen is I'll be able to hit both pyramid heads and the knife will swing back, therefore hitting them again. This strategy allows me to take zero damage and deal immense damage to the pyramid heads. They are infinitely stunned until they die. They are... I guess my sad sacks, is what I'll say. And easy fight. Now I can run. Also, I play the rest of this out on uh, keyboard because now um, the game is going to change because I'm in tank controls. I also need to be in tank controls for the rest of the game because you do have another fun little glitch coming up. Also, pyramid heads lay eggs. They're actually closely related to pigeons, I guess. Or birds. Chickens. Lay eggs. No, you get used to the camera angles in all honesty. It's not so bad. Funny enough, you need to keep doing the game save because you can trip in this big hallway. So there actually is a faster strat where you don't have to be in tank controls here, but on hard mode it doesn't matter because you have to swap anyway to do the pyramid head strat. What is the ending on hard mode? I tend to get Maria, but it doesn't really matter what we do. Flowers? I don't want any damn flowers. Just go home already. Alright, so here's the fun glitch I like to show off. Um, normally, in order to build tension, the game will make you not walk, or not run, so you can't run up these stairs you'll see coming up, like, by charging up the stairs, it will stop me. However, they didn't ex expect the barbershop quartet-style running, so I'm gonna strafe up the stairs and be like, that's all, folks, as we kind of just do that, like, like this. It's comedic, and it works, but we can kind of skip the whole section of having to walk up here. 
I still do trip on accident if I don't uh, get my angles right, so I do need to be a bit careful. All right, now is the fight. The way the fight's gonna work is I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna hit the Great Wife with the Great Knife. Now, the general idea is she's gonna fire moths at me. This is annoying. I want to get her on this edge of the bed so she doesn't grab me. As well, I kinda wanna hit her at the apex of the circle. As in doing so, you'll see the blood comes out. Now, there are two things that will do damage here. Now, if you're wondering as well, why is this RNG? Well, it's RNG because I quite literally won't be able to hit her at times. So again, I want to face the bed, that prevents the grab, and swing. Good. Free hit. That's fine. So this is why it's RNG. Uh, the great wife fight is very, very awkward. All right, that was actually a counterattack too. All right, go back to the bed. Uh, there is a rare glitch that can happen where she'll get stuck on the bed permanently. Also, fun fact, she'll only grab you if uh, you are in, like, range of being grabbed. Which, if you're facing the bed, you're never in range of being grabbed. It's kind of fun. Oh, I got damage there. A lot of people ask, is it not faster to simply use guns? No. Uh, she is a genuine tank. Uh, she has infinite amounts of health. Uh, it is absolutely wild. If you're wondering how do you do this on plank only, you time out the fight. What an amazing fight. Anyway, uh, time. And let's see what we got. 45.50. I was only 40 seconds off PB. Like, in all honesty, for a marathon-style run, that wasn't bad. My estimate could have been lower. I, I thought it would mess up more, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was kind of expecting some hiccups, but, uh... I'm on my game tonight, what could I say? I am on the game tonight. Good stuff. Uh, well, I mean, the RTA really doesn't matter too much. Uh, this is the time that matters over there. Uh, that is 45.50, which I think my P was like 45.10, so... Cool. Anyway... I do hope that you all enjoyed uh, this special GDQ hotfix of, I guess, I'm calling it the speedruns of the Crypt Preview. I run a lot of horror games. I like to showcase a lot of horror games. I'll be having another runner on for a game coming up next Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. So if you enjoy um, any of this whatsoever, come out and check the show. Uh, we do it there. If you're watching YouTube, come check us out on Twitch and vice versa as well. Uh, if you enjoyed me, well, I am McDysis. I do a lot of horror games and horror game speedruns. I'm a big fan of the genre. You can find me here. You can find me at twitch.tv slash McDysis. As well, I'm on Twitter at McDysis underscore Twitch and YouTube on pretty much all platforms under the same name, even Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that. I made them because I thought it would be fun, but I forget to post sometimes, but I try. Anyway, uh, that about wraps it up for the GDQ Hotfix for the night. We had a lot of shows, a lot of uh, stuff going on. And I'm actually not sure how we do the ending here. Uh, I'll actually ask. Uh, uh, Relkin, do you know uh, how, how we end? Do we just do we just end? <laughs> I can do my usual ending, but I don't know if we're ending from here or if it's like anything in mind. Anyway, though, while that's going on and while we're kind of getting that figured out, I just want to say that I hope you all had a wonderful time watching for all the shows tonight. I hope that you all had a wonderful day and or night. And hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. Uh, I can probably read the plug for tomorrow if I know what it is, but I'm not sure Jane what it said, is, actually. Did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Oh, tomorrow's aimbot, right? Are you confusing me with someone cool. else? Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be uh, aimbot and random number generation, <laughs> which uh, starts around 7pm EST. So if you'd like to join for that, you can find it there. Anyway, have a wonderful rest of the day and or night, and we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah.